Okay, let's get started. Every time it never, um, what's that called? I, n- I never get used to it. It's so beautiful. Did we do it the first time? The first time we ever had it. Yeah. A, yeah. On the very first episode, you and I, know, <laughs> it was like, um, I think it was well into our run. Okay. But- there was a, there was an era where we didn't introduce ourselves. There was an era where we did, a, or I did a poem. There oh, was right. one, a couple of weeks where we, uh, did a poem in tandem. Right. You know? And then it just became, Amy and Riley, and now it's one of the most popular <laughs> intros in pod, the podcast world. It's a landmark. I listened to a couple, like, Fresh Air or whatever, and did you know that, I mean, they go, Terry. <laughs> is that Which the Fresh one is air? that? What? Is that the news one? Oh, um, is the, the intro? Yeah. That we have? <laughs> or Fresh Air? At first, I thought it was fresh air, but then I realized I think it's a different NPR like news thing. Oh, um, do you mind doing it? All again? things considered. Oh, okay, yeah. I don't that's, know. I think you that's guys, the one. I haven't listened to the radio in a while. Oh, really? Yeah. Or any podcasts? I listen to podcasts. Oh, okay. But I guess not every podcast has a formal introduction. No, I mean it's something that you and I talked about, <laughs> and it's true. Not every podcast has a way to segue in so it's like it's okay that we're still you know working on it i think it's perfectly fine that we we're just go back and forth and sing each other's names for a little while right (laughs) we keep it loose over here yeah um well this is our does it seem like we've it's been a long time since we turtle timed kind of what do you think well last week was kind of a weird one it was like wild yeah were you proud of that episode (laughs) Um, <laughs> I think it was fun, actually. Yeah, I thought it was fun, too. We were drinking Modelo's. It was yeah. right after the fact. We had no time to process our feelings. We were talking about it in real time. It was kind of a fun energy. But now we're back to regularly scheduled um, turtle time. Yeah. And we've had time to think and marinate about all of the things we witnessed <laughs> last yeah. night. Yeah. Um, And then in the real world, we were talking about a minute ago, uh, I think this is like two day old news at this point, but Ariana bought her own house right. in uh, the same zip code that we're in right now. No way. It is. Really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, and you can't <laughs> say the zip. Could you say? Well, it's public. Oh, good. Okay. But we don't want to say it on, well, right. We wouldn't say it on air. Can you say the first two numbers? Nine one? Nine zero zero. Nine zero zero. Yeah. Okay, that's not a huge spoiler for anybody. That's pretty much that a lot of most of it. Nine zero zero. But let's just say she can see. I believe if the photos are to be trusted, the Hollywood sign. She can. Yes. Could she peek? from the west? Okay. If she looks westward. <laughs> if she looks eastward. If she looks eastward. <laughs> Wait, where does the sun rise? Sun rises like yeast in the east, right? Oh, wow. I've heard that before. So she could look over. Yeah, that's how you remember, I think. And then it it sets in the west. So she yawned. Imagine her getting up. She wakes up. She does a big yawn. Makes her own bubble latte. She's like... Dumplin'. Dumplin'. Yeah, she goes, I actually lied my entire (laughs) life. Those dumplin' lattes were pure shit, even though Lala said and pretended like they were really good. And she said she would fuck Sandoval (laughs) for one. But if Ariana goes... Fuck this. I'm making my own. And she wakes up. She does a big yawn. She looks eastward as the sun is rising. She'll see the sun rise over Hollywood. I think so. And then she'll be like, I officially made it. Yeah. She's like, I own this house alone, bitch. Oh, man. We, we <laughs> predict that Ariana is saying bitch a lot <laughs> in her life. She's like, you in danger, girl. <laughs> Do you think that she, if she looked eastward um, down upon other houses, she would see Stassi and Bo's house and also <laughs> where we are now Uh, maybe do you think she's already peeking out those (laughs) windows as we speak at us uh i think she's in new york oh right oh i I forgot um she's in new york now yeah okay i think think she has just a little bit of time left i found out the the official end date of chicago (gasps) april 7th so soon i wish it's a hectic time for me otherwise i totally would have gone so we can't go closing night i mean let's talk April 7th. That's kind of <laughs> Go bad. for 24 hours. Yeah. I mean, that's bad for me too. Yeah. Um, I don't know. 
I, I, I do want to honor her, but it's kind of a, a, it's kind of a trek for you and I to go up to New York yeah. this year. Yeah, any other time, uh, life allowing, I would have gone. Yeah, and it's not one of those things where we could just. Uh, I was going to say we could just imagine what it is. But I guess if I watched the movie and I just pretended that Ariana was the main actor in that. Yeah. Who plays uh, Roxy in the... Renee Zellweger. Really? Mm-hmm. Is she a good Roxy? Yeah. Is she this sort of template for all Roxies? <laughs> I feel like they vary, actually. Um, because, like... I'm pretty sure all of the Bravo people always play Roxy and then usually a more tenured person plays Mm. Velma and then another more fun famous person will the other cat like a stunt role is matron Mama Morton who Queen Latifah played in the movie like right now it's Jinx Monsoon actually I don't know if she's still doing it but from RuPaul's Drag Race like they have fun with that one too okay so it's two stunt casting roles sillier (laughs) You choose, and then they link up with someone who's a tried and true Broadway. I think that's the message. Legend, yeah. I still want to watch Chicago someday. Let's do it. I hope you'll, that you don't hate it. You'll watch it with me. Yeah, I'm okay. pretty sure my dad has the DVD. Okay, I might have it in my possession. Can we go to your dad's <laughs> house yeah. and say you can't go in the living room for a couple hours? <laughs> me and Amy are watching Chicago. There's no way he won't want to watch it. He'll want to watch. He'll be like, I love this movie. That's awesome. Okay. We don't, I was going to say we don't watch a lot of movies together, but that's not true anymore. That would be a full blown lie. We saw Dune 2 together and we just saw Roadhouse together. It's true. Um, have I told you this already, but I'm pretty sure it was Chicago. There's a, a moment on the Barefoot Contessa with- What's that again? Ina Garden, the cooking show. You've talked to me about that before. Um, She loves her husband and makes him lunch and dinner all the time, but he travels a lot. Aww. And there's this one part when she, uh, he's going on a trip, so she packs him stuff that he can eat like on his trip or whatever. And she's like, and I want to pack him a video for some entertainment. And she was like, his two favorite movies are, it was like Chicago and- I think it was like, um, like Apollo 13. 13. Wow. I, I hope I'm not wrong, but she was like, Chicago's too sexy. Let's make it Apollo 13 and like throws away the Chicago DVD. She's like, I can't have him watching that. In the trash? (laughs) She's just like, not that one. So I have a lot of questions. (laughs) Barefoot Contessa is a reality show? It's like I mean, a no. cooking show, okay. like Martha Stewart or like But whatever. in it, she kind of gives you a little glimpse into her, ho- her home life. Mm-hmm. And she loves her husband. Yeah, it's an ongoing gag that like he works out of town during the week and he comes home on Friday nights and she'll often make him like roast chicken or something wow. on Friday night and then they spend the weekend together. Um, but they're like horny for each other to this wow. day and I love them and they're the best couple on earth. They they are the true benchmark like used to be Kyle and Mauricio um mm-hmm. like Rita Wilson and Tom Hanks. Um You like that relationship? <laughs> well, I mean, I think actually they did start in a an affair, so. Who did? They were Tom and Rita. Who was Tom or who was Rita? Dating I think Tom first? was maybe married. Tom Hanks, America's <laughs> dad, was married. I think there's tea there. Whoa. Yeah. They don't talk about it? <laughs> no. Okay. Chet Hanks takes all the drama from the family. Ch- uh, Chez? What's his name? What's the, what's the other boy? <laughs> Chet Hanks is cool. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I'm sorry. Which is the he's one the, that like, you like? He's the like Rasta one. Oh, I'm sorry. Which is uh, the other Colin boy? Colin Hanks. Oh, I like Colin. Yeah. I like, he's got his dad's energy, but he's a little more subversive. He's kind of like a Gen X icon. Yeah, I'm proud of him. I hope he's <laughs> a good uh, person. I'm sure he I've is. I've heard only good things. I can I. This is. I don't know if I should say this, but I met, I got to Zoom uh, one time. I interviewed um, with his wife for a job. Oh. And it was in Chad Hanks. What's his name? Uh, Colin <laughs> Hanks' home. Oh. He was kind of running around in the background, going, "Who are you zooming with?" Uh-huh. And I said, "My name's Riley." No, he was he actually. <laughs> he wasn't actually on it, but I think I um yeah I feel like um. <laughs> Has Chet been on Watch What Happens Live? That would be fun. Chet. His name's Chet? Yes. C-H-E-T? Yes. Okay. I kind of... Uh, he was a rapper named Chet Hayes, I think. I kinda, yeah. Anytime I see anything to do with Chet, I close my eyes, I close my ears, and I wait for it to be over. Because I just don't want to know anything about him. Yeah. He's, he's like... 
he's like a such a figure that is pushed upon me pop culturally <laughs> where I've never heard him say one word that had any merit. So yeah. anytime I ever hear him talking, I say, I don't want anything to do with this. So I've almost like blocked him out of my life. Yeah. Well, we have Tom and Rita to blame for that. Because they produced him? They made him. So it's just Colin and Chet. It's a total good son vibe over there, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, different if... mommies. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, okay. I still, I, I can still call them good son because that was sort of the similar vibe in that too. He yeah. was, unfortunately, Macaulay Culkin was also from a previous marriage. Yeah. He hated... Elijah Wood. Oh, yeah. Doesn't he like fling him off a cliff or something? He, um, or is it vice versa? Unfortunately, at the end, <laughs> spoiler alert, but unfortunately, at the end, the mom has to make uh, a Sophie's total choice. Total Sophie's choice. Should I save my evil, evil, awful boy? I think, I think Elijah Wood's not even her actual boy. I oh. think he's like, he's like her stepson uh -huh. through marriage, but she knows. She looks at Macaulay Culkin. He goes, please, mommy, I'm actually a good boy. And she goes, she goes, no, you're not. And she knows. And she's she like, that's going to be a life of heartache over yeah. here. He's bad. I mean, he's bad in that movie. I got to watch it again. You know who wrote that film? Who? Ian McEwen. Do you know that guy? Who? What else? Did he he wrote Atonement. He wrote <gasps> oh. On Chesil Beach. He's like a tried and true literary sensation. And he wrote Good Son. He took the check on that one. <laughs> I, I've only seen it once, but it still holds so much weight in my mind. It's I like, like one of little those... stinker movies like that, like you... like where people are little stinkers. Like I would say it's like a avenue of the um, like single white female uh, category where mm -hmm. someone is just a nut job and yeah. ruins everyone's life. Fatal attraction is that yes. right? Yeah. Total nutcase. <laughs> I didn't tell you. I last week at the New Bev, I saw Swim Fan. Oh, I love that movie. I do too. <laughs> I um, I saw that in high school in like ninth grade. One of the uh, rare movies I went to with friends. The director and the stars came in person. Okay, I remember one of the stars, <laughs> Lily Sabisky. No, that's the Glass House, Fuck. which was played second after it. But we were too tired and we left. Okay, but was she there for that? No, the director was. Okay, who's who's the swim <laughs> fan? I know the guy. I remember it's, him. Um, what's his name? Brad. No, Jesse Bradford. Jesse Bradford. He's in Bring It On as well. Oh, okay, okay. And then um, oh. Sherry Appleby. Sherry Appleby. I'm not sure if I remember her. Um, she was on Roswell. Okay. She was on that show about The Bachelor, like Unreal or whatever. Okay. Um, she, I think she was on Girls for a stint um okay and uh the other girl is erica christensen but she was filming and couldn't come oh well I'm, I'm... she's the swim fan so it's kind of like i got i remember it a little bit was it good like watching it again <laughs> it was fun i was kind of nervous because we bought the tickets before we knew anyone was going to be there and then we got there and they were like they're going to be here. And I was like, oh, that's cool. But I was also kind of worried because it's kind of a movie that you laugh at yeah. because it's like outrageous. Yeah. And I was like, they like put their time into this. Like the, they think they're kind of proud of it. Yeah. And I was like, is it, is it going to be like, feel bad to like laugh at silly parts? But actually it's generally entertaining and yeah. the things that are funny like are kind of supposed to be funny because you're like she's insane yeah you know no i'm sure it was the right <laughs> calibration of laughs yeah i told you i were people over laughing <laughs> i was thinking of you uh actually no i i it was a good amount okay. of interaction no theater snobs in I there trying so. to trying to show off to jesse bradford <laughs> that they really get the movie or yeah. whatever it's always funny though when you go to stuff like that and they're like happy to participate because, you know, it's fun or whatever. But you realize that like that was such a small part of their life. Like, yeah, they don't remember shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they don't care about it as much as you. They're just happy to see it in a theater. And I'm sure it's not a big deal to them at all. Like, it's fun. Imagine getting invited to something and be like, do you remember like two weeks at work in 2001? You're like, yeah. no. Yeah. No, but I, I mean, yeah, and what an honor, no matter what context it's in, what an honor to watch a movie 20 years later with an audience and yeah. have them laugh and cry and <laughs> squeal. Yeah, apparently Sherry Appleby did her own stunts because the stunt woman bitched out and there's a scene when she gets like thrown into the pool and is like waited and like passed out and that the stunt woman was like i know i agreed to do this but i can't i can't Whoa. i can't do it and Sherry Appleby was like i'll do it 
whoa, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm like, wow, stunt fail. Yeah, that's so crazy. They should. Uh, <laughs> you had in, one job. <laughs> yeah, in the credits, they should just cross out like if they had a stunt coordinator, just cross out their name. And yeah. The, uh, wow, well, that's really fun. I was gonna yeah, say sorry. an anecdote about me going to a film, but I'm not sure if it's so relevant, and I don't want to fully derail the conversation. But I, I, um, I love that we get to have that experience in Los Angeles. Oh, one yeah. of the perks. It's overwhelming. It's so fun. Well, so to go back to Ariana's house. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think there's any other way to think of this except it's very good <laughs> and everyone wants this. Yeah. Again, I always want the financial details. So I'm like, is it to be believed that she, I'm curious about the thing, the narrative that Tom keeps saying that he's been the only one paying, which like, I don't really know how that works. Um, so in this, in this case, is she just now paying her own mortgage and forgoing the other one but you would think that if she knew enough to say I can't vacate the other home with him because I need to maintain ownership wouldn't paying the mortgage be an even more important part of that than yeah. not vacating yeah I mean the mortgage part of it it's like we're only hearing tom's right. side like and and i think she explained in the after show she was like um he won't give me proper statements right. i have no idea what kind of financial accounting is going on she's like basically jason his band manager is like doing <laughs> quickbooks or something right. and sending her statements so she's like until i know exactly what it is i'm sure the the true fact is ariana has so much money now mm -hmm. and i i don't think this is wild to say probably 10 million dollars from uh, all of these brand deals we i was texting some friends about i was like i wonder what her mortgage would be at this amount like i mean we don't know what like the situation was of like cash versus loan and all that stuff cash. but like <laughs> she pulled up in a brinks truck and said here's the cash half down you know like i mean yeah like I, I think people are really underestimating how much money Ariana has made. And I think at the era in, in this season, season 11, she had not got that dump truck filled with cash yet. Yeah. It's like it takes – people have 90 days to pay you for an ad or even more, 180 yeah. days. She could be waiting on that money six months. But after the six-month point in this era, a dump truck filled with cash <laughs> poured on her, filled up their house. And yeah. then now Ariana is like – it's not worth it to her anymore. She's going to make him sell at the top dollar. She already sued him. So yeah. it, she already sued him to where it's like at $3 million, you have to sell. You can't wait around or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. she hit a cap of like what he has to sell at. And then now she just has so much money that she can do this on her own while still fighting the shit out of him yeah. for, the, for the house. But I don't know if he has to leave anymore. That's the one thing I uh -huh. don't know. Right. I don't think she cares anymore about letting him just have that house right. right well did you see on the after show james apparently said tom told him that he wants to raise his future children in that backyard yeah I, yeah i heard that but i don't but that doesn't sound so wild to me yeah <laughs> right i mean i mean to everyone else it's a house of horrors but to him it's the best he doesn't yeah houses don't have memories to him i don't think <laughs> he doesn't feel like they're he's not like i guess I think he feels like this is just, oh, I don't know. I'm not going to justify what he thinks, but it makes sense to me that he wants to live at that home and have children there because he said he wanted that home. And obviously, yeah. I think in the future, he expects to have a family. So yeah. he wants that to be his wonderful family home. You're saying that because of the despicable, horrible things <laughs> that happened, he should personally not want to associate his family with Do you think his future wife wants to live in the house that he uh, lived in with his ex for 10 years? I mean, I guess LA is rough. Yeah, like, yeah they're, I mean, they're going to take what they can get. I mean, house wise, I, I mean, at a certain, I mean, I don't. He's at a level where he's not like me, but at, house wise, you don't. <laughs> a lot of not a, not a lot of people have room or options to to forego home life to have a new significant other. You know what I mean? I mean, just the fact that he's so rich, it's an option for him. But most people, I don't think we, you could say we have to move out and start a new home. Do you because think he's rich? Tom Sandoval. In he, actuality, once all said and done, and he has to for, like let go of his piece of the pie or whatever, I feel like he'll be left with nothing. He got one point eight million for this season, or you know something like that. So that's obviously good. If Schwartz and Sandys is doing good, I don't know. I don't. It doesn't seem to be doing very <laughs> good. He still has a percentage of Tom Tom. I think he's still playing shows. Like he's not doing 
great. I think he's like going to be rough for a few years until he's able to be a public figure again that people celebrate and make all brand deals again. But I don't think he's down in the doghouse right now. I don't think. I just, this always turns into a financial podcast, but I want the facts and figures. Mm. Um, But um, happy for her that she has her own space. Hopefully that means she can be donezo. There was, I mean, there was the drama on this episode was that uh, Tom is a negligent uh, pet owner yet again. Yes. um, Like kind of breezed over. I mean, it's it's a huge aspect of this episode, but not really like there's so much other bigger stuff that happens. But uh, yeah, I mean, Ariana just got a new level of hatred towards him. Yeah. Like, I can't believe he did that. Yeah. It's strange that it just really feels like he acts like the pets aren't his. Yeah. When he's had them their whole life. I think that he, I think that he, like Ariana said, is just like innately irresponsible. Mm -hmm. And he didn't remember that Maya had gone into the room after him. Like maybe she walked (laughs) in. She's like an 80 pound dog. (laughs) Seriously. I mean, you you don't close the, I mean, I I don't know. Maybe he needs to explain it because he did a horrible job explaining it. Yeah, they didn't, they should have asked him about it on the after show. There's a scene, which we'll get to, but I want to say it now. When, when. When Tom Sandoval shows up to that lunch looking like Ace Ventura and Lala <laughs> says, you're the happiest I've ever seen you. Your energy is so good. Immediately after, he starts to explain that he just, this Maya situation happened, that he locked her in and then he knew at this point that he that she was at the emergency vet. I was like, yeah. why is your energy good right, right now? What the hell are you talking about? Right. Like, even in the grand scheme of Scandoval, which we consider so much worse, the fact that you did something to Ariana's dog that yeah. caused it to go to the emergency vet is really horrific yeah and i can't believe i mean it's kind of like brushed over because this is a show about like relationships or whatever but that was very bad yeah and i can't believe that uh ariana's still dealing with shit like that like yeah. he like he shouldn't have gone in her room an air vent right air conditioning yeah i feel issue. like that should hopefully maybe it was the final straw where she was like i actually can't live here yeah like it's no longer even with my rules of how I want to live and how it is my house, he's actively, I cannot prevent him from doing horrible, irresponsible <laughs> shit no matter when. Like, yeah. like, I just can't stop him from doing it. So that's the final straw. Yeah. No. It's like, it's just wild to me. It's like to be in your 40s and still like can't take care of like a dog or a cat. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, you, you, you're, you're really right. I don't understand why. I don't under. I couldn't under, imagine living with animals that are technically your partners, but that you don't consider yours. And he should have a good excuse for why he closed the door on Maya, because it, uh, it's understandable that Maya went into the room to right. follow him or whatever. But to forget that she's there or to think that she should be kept in the room, you right. know, I don't know. She what ate a bunch takeout of, was it? Chicken saute. And she ate wooden skewers. No. I put the subtitle or the captions on because I had no yeah, clue what she said. Yeah. She goes, chicken saute. And I was like, okay, she <laughs> ate chicken saute. Because Lala goes, that's deadly. And I was like, chicken saute. <laughs> I know. Is- I was like trying to think. No. I was like, is it like chocolate? She <laughs> like said what? wooden yeah, saute, um, <laughs> cocoa powder. Yeah. No, it's, it was wooden skewers oh, that Maya fuck. eats. She eats. She's a little devil. She eats like Relaxatives. Tide Pods. <laughs> Yeah. She eats Tide Pods, glass. Maya's the reason that we have to ring a bell every time we want to buy anything. You <laughs> think so? Because Maya, if you, she went to CVS, she's basically going to town She'll eating. She'll eat the deodorant. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I thought that was um, a very a good example to remind all of us that um, Tom Sandoval is extremely irresponsible. And another reason why Ariana said earlier this season why she never, ever thought about having children with Tom because yeah. she knew deep in her heart of hearts that he would not be able to take care of someone responsibly. Yeah. And this Maya thing is a very, um, to me, a, a very big deal yeah. that Maya could have potentially died because he wasn't being um, aware yeah. enough. Yeah. I know how that uh, $6,000 bill goes. Like I yeah. had that a couple years ago and it like fucked up my whole year. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, you, yeah, I, I dealt with the same shit. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's horrible. It's too expensive. Yeah. And um, it happens. It could happen at any time. Yeah. There was a good TikTok I saw about it where it was like, it was like a dog smiling, like kind of <laughs> devilishly. And it was like, it was like, 
you don't know that I'm going to cost you $10,000 if I like, I don't know, you know, it's yeah. just silly. Like, I always see those. It's like, mom just <laughs> finally paid off her credit card. Should I, yeah. A, like mysteriously start like not eating or like cough in a weird way? Yeah, or like, should I limp for one second? Yeah. It was, yeah, that was the best. That was a great TikTok. Such a fun thing. Um, Yeah, this, um, I, I, oh, oh, I guess maybe let's talk for, I want to hear your thoughts on Potomac really quick, just because oh, yeah. I think Potomac news is heating up. So to me, uh, Potomac is in a dire state culturally. Yeah. I mean, it's just... Ex- it ex- sounds like everyone agrees. Yeah, I think I think even Andy agrees. Uh, Andy, at the start of this reunion, has done an unprecedented thing where I saw it. He goes... He, he basically says, we have to move forward on this show, and I'm going to make it my mission to move past some grievances. Yeah. So how can we do that? Yeah. I think uh, subtly saying... This show will not move forward if Giselle and Candace have this fracture that they Mm -hmm. can't get over because it's ruining the show. Yeah. Then, before the reunion has aired, we find out Candace is quitting. Yeah. Or, yeah, I mean, I don't think she was fired. Yeah. I think she quit. And for me, Candace uh, and Karen are the most valuable people on that show now. I'm Mm -hmm. like, watching this season... We haven't been actively talking about it, you and I, but I feel like Giselle is an absolute detriment to this mm. show. Mm-hmm. So Candace leaving is not a good sign. No. Um, she, she was, yeah, always the most fun to watch. Um, was it her statement? I think it was that it was like, this isn't goodbye, it's see you later or something like that. Was that hers? Yeah, I think so. I yeah. mean, I think, I, I don't know because we can never trust exits because Bravo lets them say whatever they want. Yeah. Like Marlo got to say, I'm ready for a new chapter. Oh, I right. definitely quit Atlanta. Don't even <laughs> question that I quit. And Sonia got to say the same thing. She's yeah. like, Sonia's like, it's like, no offense, Sonia, but you did not leave Atlanta. I mean, come on. Like, yeah. it's ridiculous. So I think Bravo is nice to let them do that. Yeah. They give them the the courtesy of, of saying any potential outcome happened. Yeah. But I think with Candace specifically, she's very powerful on Potomac. I uh, think she was the one that was like the future of what Potomac could be. Yeah. So her leaving... They might have um, a drastic decision coming Why up. It, she should move to New York and do Roni. That would be fun. Candace? Yeah. yeah that Music would be, career in New York? Oh, that would be so fun. I mean, <gasps> That yeah. would be great. I mean, I would like to see her on Atlanta, too. She yeah. has that Drew uh, potential rift, and they also <laughs> had that history together. I mean, Candace yeah. would be good on any franchise. I think, um, I think we've talked about it a little bit, but where Giselle went with Candace mm-hmm. in terms of accusing her husband mm-hmm. of... Uh, bordering on sexually yeah. ass- assaulting her in a hotel room or or, 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 or was, wanting to start an affair with her. It was like, he was like, hey, can I talk to you for a minute at the reunion when like everyone was there? Yeah. And she was like, I cannot enter a room with a, a man. Yeah. Oh, it wasn't even at a hotel. It was in- No, it was like her dressing yeah. room oh, at yeah. the reunion. Yeah. I, I feel like Giselle, um, Giselle went to a place to create conflict that was um, irredeemable yeah. in Candace's eyes. I loved that Candace was like, absolutely fucking not. Like, bravo, oh. bravo, bravo. Yeah. Like, I'm not doing this. And then Giselle has since doubled down. And Candace said some pretty, um, I would say, outlandish <laughs> shit to Giselle back. So now Giselle has that as a sticking point to always hate Candace for all of time. But really, in my opinion, what Giselle did to Candace is the thing that needs to be repaired and Giselle just won't do it so yeah. like they have this permanent um fracture right in the group yeah. and then I think Ashley is low low I mean not low quality but just not <laughs> not bringing it and Robin like actively despises the show right. and Juan does as well and doesn't want to give anything to it while still wanting to be asked back every single season they it's like threw it all away Robin and, and Juan <laughs> yeah I feel like I I think that that patreon thing or whatever it was uh was yeah. a huge mark against her yeah. by andy and everyone um did you also see that um anna marie is not being asked back but she was very uh straightforward about the fact that she was fired yeah she was yeah she was good she um she did the thing where she was like i had so much potential <laughs> and you squandered it you would have seen so much epic shit if you kept me <laughs> yeah she's on. like you didn't get to see the full version yeah and she was like basically bravo was like worm tongue in my ear <laughs> telling me to go after um 
Sutton's esophagus issue. Uh-huh. She's like, she blamed production for yeah. why she spent six hours. It's like, well, unfortunately, it's up to you to choose what. Yeah. If Bravo gives you a suggestion, you don't have to go with it. Yeah. If you think it's lame to always point out somebody's esophageal issues, don't do it. Yeah. That separates someone who can know what's going to be good on TV and what's not. Yeah. And I, and, I mean, we knew Anne, Anna Marie was not coming back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, the world hated her. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, when I read her statement, I was like, oh, she's like fully, it was like a very long notes app kind of thing. Yeah, she was like, it is so unfortunate that you never got to see the beautiful power of me. And um, yeah, she's right. We won't see that beautiful power. I didn't see even, uh, I didn't see small glimpses of, of her power. Even, no. even though it was also overshadowed by um, her really stupid decisions on the show of like what to make a big deal. I didn't really see much merit in the 30% that was not um, yeah. bad conflict with the cast. Did you see... Uh... It was on like comments by Bravo or something like that. They pointed out that Paris Hilton uh, commented on a clip of Mauricio talking about the Hilton and Highland drama. And she's like, she said, um, my father is a consummate gentleman and has always taken the higher road. He would never speak negatively about his family, especially in the press. Frankly, we're all sick of him using the Hilton name every chance he gets to plug his lame show. It's enough already. Whoa. Mauricio's like down in the dumps with the Hiltons. Well, okay. I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> First of all, I'm absolutely anti Hilton <laughs> in every way. Not Paris, but I think the chain. Her- the chain. <laughs> I absolutely hate Hilton hotels. No, <laughs> I'm more of a Kimpton girl. <laughs> no, I, I'm, uh, I think it's ridiculous for Paris to um, keep up this ruse that her parents are beautiful spirits that uh, <laughs> no one should have any qualms about. That's ridiculous. We yeah. know that Kathy Hilton is an absolute tyrant <laughs> and monster. So I'm, her dad might be fun or whatever, but I actually valued what Mauricio said. Mm-hmm. He said, this company brought in $1.9 billion when I was a part of Hilton and Highland. I asked for equity in the company because I was getting 150000 a year or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And I obviously brought in so much more business. I gave him a deadline. And then he probably had so much motivation to start his own company. It's the best decision he ever did. Yeah. You, like, I'm not a company. We're not company <laughs> people. We don't, yeah. we're not, like, it's awesome to go yeah. out on his own and start his own business. It's like an American dream story. Yeah. And I feel like I'm glad he was honest. He's on a reality show. What Would we want him to lie about what truly happened? It's good to know the nuance of that. And I think, I think Paris saying that it's like it's fine that she like is on her parents side or whatever i don't know why she is after they did what they did to her but i think it's just i don't fault mauricio for telling the truth and i think he was very diplomatic did you watch buying beverly hills um i didn't watch the show i've seen the clips but i'm kind of curious now that it keeps popping up it's it's kind of wild because they break the fourth wall on buying beverly hills Mm -hmm. and kyle talks about how she has to film on Beverly Hills and she says like just so you know they're picking up filming again on Beverly Hills to like capture the um capture what's going on in the separation and the kids are like oh no (laughs) I'm like it's like I think it's so fucked up of buying Beverly Hills that they like are just starting out they want to break the fourth wall immediately they want to get as much juice as they can from a established a couple that was established on a different network right. and then they want to break the fault fourth wall and get all the exclusives. And now everyone, the audience is so fickle. They're like buying Beverly Hills has the real shit. It's like, <laughs> yeah, they just usurped yeah. Bravo's energy. Bravo is the one who made this couple popular and they let them break the fourth wall, which is not something that Bravo wants to do right. all the time. And so people love that Kyle is like sort of unfettered, uh-huh. but what Kyle didn't say anything that was so, powerful that bravo didn't get in my opinion it is just weird to like it's interesting that they're doing all of this knowing how wealthy they are like they couldn't be richer and they're still like not only are we gonna do one show we're gonna do two and like it's blowing up our family life still like she fucked up not that it was her fault, but like her relationship got fucked up with both of her sisters over the past 10 plus years. Now there's a second show yeah. that's causing shit with her family. And it's like, how is this worth it? Like they just really love it, I guess. I think for Mauricio, this was a future for his children. 
I, I, you know, in addition to giving them the keys to his uh, real estate <laughs> empire. They're the luckiest agents on earth. He's just like, do you want a $10 million property to list? I'll give it to you. And they're like, okay, dad. Yeah. And also, <laughs> do you want to be the stars of a reality show that was built off Kyle's, you know, Bravo yeah. uh, world? Um, so I think that he, I, it's, if someone wants to make a show with you, I think you do it. You know, I mean, unless it's going to be extremely detrimental. I think Mauricio and Kyle have bigger issues than that. I think that, I think, I think Mauricio did not treat Kyle well after, a, you know, a long time. And, and it's sort of like Katie and Schwartz, she just realized she was unhappy yeah. and he wasn't making steps to be better. Um, but uh, it's, I think buying Beverly Hills is, is worth watching if you just watch it for the glimpses into the relationship that Bravo didn't get. Mm-hmm. But I am not a fan of, I don't care about real estate shit at mm-hmm. all. So it's like that. They, um, Netflix wants to eat, have its cake and eat it too. They wanted it to be about this real estate shit, but they were so gleefully wanting to also get the scraps of Bravo runoff yeah. with Kyle and Mauricio, which I think is um, craven and mm-hmm. shitty. Well, I, I feel like it's good uh, weekend viewing, maybe. I think it's going to rain this weekend. Maybe I'll just sit around and watch that. That's a rainy day. <laughs> Buying Beverly Hills. Did it rain last weekend? It keeps raining. What the hell is going on with Los Angeles weather? It's completely different than when I moved here 12 years ago. It's crazy. There's, there's different seasons. Like, I remember, it, I, I swear, I, it's fully changed, everything yeah. about it. Humid. Is it humid? Bugs. There's bugs now. There's bugs in Los Angeles. That everyone. was a promise that w- was supposed to be upheld. That there's no bugs? Yeah. Now it's like you go out there, you're basically, you open your mouth for one second, bugs fly in. Um, so we had, <laughs> Amy and I had no news to talk about except Ariana <laughs> buying a house and then uh, Candace on Potomac. But we yeah. ended up doing a, you know, I think, I don't know how valuable it was, but 36 minutes of news. That's, that's like not, nothing to sneeze at, right? <laughs> yeah. Was there in, anything else that it? We really covered it all. Um, swim fan, <laughs> um, buying Beverly Hills. We didn't even think we would talk about yeah. that. Um yeah, I okay. think we did good. So why don't we, you and I, take a brief piss together <laughs> and then come back and talk about a shocking episode of Vanderpump Rules. Yeah. Maybe less powerful valley, mm-hmm. but still powerful. And then honor all of those who did the Summer House Challenge and tell our thoughts about last week's Summer House. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Are you going to piss? I'm, I'm going to think about it. Yeah, I'm going to squeeze... <laughs> some out just to see what happens okay okay all right <laughs> we're back here we are um we <laughs> i'll just say it i think we i, I went to the bathroom i'm proud of you <laughs> <laughs> i was able to sometimes uh yeah sometimes we don't actually take certified turtle piss breaks i hate to do a peek behind the <laughs> toilet yeah um, sometimes we just like need a minute to get our notes together and whatnot Amy and I just will, like I'll like look at the wall. Amy will look at the wall like separately. We'll just need to decompress for a second. But that time, full blown, real piss, right? It's true. I, I wanted to say something. <laughs> I wanted to say something just to start this conversation about Vanderpump Rules, which, which is, do you feel like we know these cast members as well as you thought you knew them before this episode? Because of the lies. Because of the lies, for sure, but also just some of the decisions they all made. Mm-hmm. I was, at the end of this episode, I was like kind of taking inventory of how much I truly know <laughs> about these cast members, these, even as a viewer. Yeah. Things that I took for granted about all of them, I was kind of shocked yeah. by a lot of things that I witnessed this episode. I felt yeah. like um scrambled my brain a little bit. Yeah. I pictured, we were talking about how it seems like... Alex Baskin uh, held them all at gunpoint and was like, if you guys don't fucking bring it this season, the show's about to be over. Um, and it felt like this episode was, it felt like the last episode was where yes. they were like, we can't do this anymore. This episode was insane. Yes. Uh, and then this episode was them being like, all right, we'll play. Right. I, I do think that. I mean, there is something about knowing that 
all hands meeting at Evolution happened, and Alex Baskin said, what the hell is going on here? I just saw footage from Lake Tahoe, and I've never seen anything like it in my life. Because then, all of a sudden, Ariana started going to events with Tom Sandoval yeah. immediately. I think last week was a mess, but I actually think that was the start of them trying to pull mm -hmm. it together. Mm -hmm. And then this episode is like, okay, skeletons out of the closet now. Let's fucking <laughs> ramp it up. But... I still think for the big reveal, even though Alex Baskin said that, and he basically gave him like an Al Pacino in, um, what's that football movie where he gives a really good speech? Uh, any given Sunday? Yeah, yeah. I, I've never even seen it, but he gives a very powerful, <laughs> motivating speech. I feel like Alex Baskin, despite that speech, I don't think that Schwartz just put his producer hat on and said that because he wanted to start shit up. That's that's my initial read. Do you? It's think just so he... random, though. Like, there's no way he didn't think it would turn into a big deal uh, yeah that's that's a real um that's a real testing of schwartz's like aw shucks demeanor yeah. and if i really don't think if he you you think there's no way in the world that he didn't think letting that loose would have ramifications it felt uh leading like he was like you know like it just felt kind of irrelevant like he was like we should all like be letting tom back in because we've all done something and then proceeds to like list the things it was it, like no one even like asked you to do that i thought yeah yeah okay i was giving full um full deference to schwartz in the scene and thinking that he really thought because him and katie's relationship was over and that this was so innocuous and that he didn't technically know when it actually happened even though he might be purposefully you know <laughs> lying to say when it was i thought that he did was bringing in a piece of evidence that he didn't think was that big of a deal but then knowing the alex baskin part of it and the evolution part of it um you know it is sort of an occam's razor situation where it's like right when you needed something powerful schwartz does make this big revelation i could be i could be skeptical about it i was i think i was just being optimistic that it was organic yeah because if schwartz did that knowing that he needed to drop a bomb uh he's a good actor yeah because i really didn't suspect it well that's why it feels um this episode like comes to a head yeah in an amazing way where i was like i didn't think we could get uh tea like this or like um like natural things happening without everyone knowing they were going to happen like i'm so pleased that we can still have a, yeah. a gotcha moment uh on the show but it's just perfect almost too good to be true but i i'm along for the ride that uh that Schwartz teed up something of like a betrayal yeah. of Katie yeah. to then be met perfectly with a new, like the night before betrayal. I mean, not really betrayal because yeah. they're not together anymore, but yeah. whatever. No, I, I, I fully agree. I mean, I, I was blown away for exactly that fact. I cannot believe that there is something new that we could learn from the past that would again change Everything we thought, because you and I are actively watching this era of Vanderpump Rules right. now, like just the season after. The fact that to know this now, there's a new piece of history in the <laughs> canon of Vanderpump Rules that will forever change the dynamics is shocking to me. In a very, very dissected and covered friend group, there's yeah. still more to learn. And it's true. Yeah. This happened. Yeah. When Shay, after Shay and Sheena got engaged, mm -hmm. like that is that is late into the Vanderpump Rules era. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I we're, we're, she, we're, she basically was like acting like it really. I mean, I guess on her end, it wasn't a big deal because she didn't um, instigate it and she said no. So on her end, she didn't do anything wrong uh, to her fiance, but it, she definitely was like, the vibe was like, who gives a shit about Shay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay well i'm i'm gonna be a little bit of devil's advocate anti sheena for a second which i never do but how much do you believe sheena's interpretation of events that it was a peck on the lips and uh -huh. she pushed him away because schwartz said and i don't know i mean schwartz is like well whatever i'm not gonna say this but when schwartz recounted it sheena said 
well, we've had some crazy times. You and I had like a holiday party. Right. You remember when we made out? Right. And then she tried to lessen the impact of that statement and tell Katie that she said it properly. You tried to make out with me. Right. But if Schwartz is to be believed when Sheena brought it up to him, it was considered a make out. Right. And I don't know if Sheena was just so afraid in the moment talking to Katie that she did absolute off the cuff damage control. Yeah. Because I don't it, know. It's it a- was giving doth protest too much like was. she was like i was like absolutely not like go to your room get out of here like it was uh you know but who's Our. who's to believe i mean schwartz isn't gonna be like no actually it was way like more than that like he it helps him too if i but mean he, except that it makes him look like a predator <laughs> no and he and I, you what did you watch the after yes. show he he says i'm hearing that she's trying to make it like i pushed her into a corner yeah and he didn't specifically say that's not true but he is keeping to the story of mutual make out right and even ariana was like uh skeptical of sheena mm-hmm. skeptical in a well because that i think she keeps using like you know who i did make out with that night ariana and i'm like that's not as helpful of a case as you think because what it says to me is that you were making out with people right I, I, and I so don't... like who's to say that there wasn't at least one more. She used that against Katie. Like Katie's going to be like, oh, okay. So <laughs> what? Like, what? how does that change anything? Right. Like to me, that just means like, oh, everybody was making out that night. Yeah. So <laughs> I have to say, well, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think it's, I think Sheena, we've seen that Sheena is already trying to lessen the impact of what she knew was an absolute betrayal to Katie at an era when her and Katie were doing very bad. Yeah. And she says why she didn't want to tell Katie. Like, and then I think, I, I don't know. I think now she might be lessening the impact of yeah. that. Of that fo- I don't know. I mean, maybe, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> did you like that they used uh, the after show as an opportunity to show the golden nugget clip again? They, <laughs> <laughs> Who said it? Ariana goes, did this happen at the Golden Nugget or Katie's? Uh, that? Yeah, Katie's like, what hotel was it? And right. Ariana's like, I don't remember. And she's like, was it the Golden Nugget? <laughs> and Jeremy or whatever that, the producer's name is like, great. Golden Deploy Nugget the button, um, <laughs> yeah. which it still makes me laugh, even though I've seen it like 400 times. Um, yeah, I love it. But uh, yeah, I feel like we'll get into that whole scenario again when we reach, you know, the reveal of it. But um, yeah, I by the end of this episode, I was like, we're back. I said we're back to myself multiple times, <laughs> but also I wasn't so down in the dumps. You know, it got, mm-hmm. it got, we, I don't know. I think we've said, it, we said last week's episode was bad, definitively bad, but I've still been enjoying watching Tom Sandoval try to crawl his way back mm-hmm. into the group and how this dynamic has never happened before on Vanderpump Rules, this specific dynamic. And it's been sort of interesting to watch, but this felt like, whoa, like, it was you new. still can surprise you yeah. st- all can still surprise me mm-hmm. and we're not even we haven't talked about it yet but like even the max boyens aspect of it, i'm right. like katie I'm like damn you can <laughs> surprise me too yeah like she did not want that out no, you could tell that was the best she was caught off guard gotcha a gotcha moment <laughs> she i've never seen her i've never seen she katie was like lie. what are you talking about i've never seen katie have to um like be really on the defensive because most of her actions, she's very good at defending herself. Yeah. And some will say most of what she's done is justified in the moment. This was like, she was on her, what's that called? Back. She was on her <laughs> heels. Yeah. Trying to get, trying to get out yeah. from this going, why is it a big deal? And trying to like yeah. change the narrative a little bit in real time. Unfortunately, really- we do have to give the presidential medal of freedom to Brock and Sheena for being, um, having their priorities straight and uh, Knowing- willing to narc people out for the show. <laughs> yeah. And I have felt, even if that was Alex Baskin saying, Sheena, what's going on with the locations on your <laughs> phone or whatever, I felt like they handled it in an organic enough way to me to where oh, yeah. Brock having that conversation with Schwartz, I was like, this is when you would say that. Yeah. Like, this is a perfect time and to talk about this. Sheena's a busybody. Like, I believe that she would have done that anyways, yeah. but she made the choice to like reveal it. Yeah. Which... I'm thankful for. Um, Okay, so this episode is called Kiss Kiss Revenge Bang. Kiss Kiss because Schwartz and Sheena kissed. Right. And then ultimately, people consider it a revenge bang. Yeah. Only Schwartz does, though. And, I I mean, right? I wouldn't uh, see it that way. Me neither. I guess you... I don't know. I think it just happened, but... I think she was... I mean... I think she was sexually attracted to Max. 
and they made love. She likes him younger. She has. She was sexually attracted to Max. Her and Max were flirting, and they finally made love. And it's possible that it's happened multiple times. Right. Uh, do you think that the producers are like, fuck yeah, like this gives us the option to maybe bring him back into the fold? <laughs> fuck yeah, we want this <laughs> cast member that flopped really hard. I think to Did me. Did you see he has a fleeting appearance on the valley? Yeah, he's in the he's at the two bit circus. Scene, yeah, right. Yeah, but they don't mention him. No. He's just there. He's a he he. I've seen him at Jackson Studio City multiple he's times. He's in the mix. He's still in the mix. Um, not I I you know I never really uh, liked uh, Max. No. Obviously, he's one of the worst things that ever no, happened. All to those Vanderpump people Rules. are dead to me. Ooh, the uh, the <laughs> all new the cast. new the new generation. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah, this was um not again. I would say um this sort of lived up to my expectations of Max. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so it's introduced that uh, James is going to DJ at Hotel Ziggy. Hell yeah. Which was, I think, like the opener of last season, right? Hotel Ziggy is like the new spot to see James. Yeah. I uh, I feel like I recently drove across town and realized where Rock and Riley's was, and I realized where Hotel Ziggy was. And they're not far from each other, actually. Wow. It's a sunset strip. I've never, I love the Sunset Strip. I've never been to Rockin, what is it called? Rockin' Riley's. Yeah. And I've never been to Hotel Ziggy. Me either. It was kind of fun, this vibe, right? <laughs> Do Would you worry if you were dancing that you might fall in that pool? <laughs> Get too hype. Um, yeah, I'm afraid of the kind of people that go there. I don't think it's my scene. Um, but they seem to like it. Do they like it? <laughs> They all got very dressed up. Yeah, they do like Hotel Ziggy. And um, Allie uh, says to James, or James says to Allie, he goes, did you invite Joe? And Allie goes, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. He goes, I kind of like uh, <laughs> Joe. She says really weird stuff sometimes, but I like her. And he says that Hotel Ziggy is an open invite kind of place <laughs> where anybody can go. And I think everybody has to say that at all times because they have to acknowledge why Tom Sandoval and Ariana get invited to the same thing. Yeah. In this era of Vanderpump Rules. Right. It's like, I invited everybody. It's just like, yeah, we know, because you want Sandoval and Ariana yeah. to be in the same place. Which does make the show better. It does. Um, then Billy Lee visits Tom. She says she's going to bring her girl T to Hotel Ziggy to meet him. Um, he brings up um, that he offered Ariana fair market value uh, for you know her half of the house and that he hasn't heard back. Um, then Ariana is FaceTiming with Anne, his assistant, to get, I don't know, details on what his plans are or whatever. And she's like, I wanted to ask you, like, I really need an assistant now. Um, I don't, do you know anyone? Because you're an assistant. And she's like, can I please be in the running? Can I be your assistant? Yeah. Um, which that didn't happen, did it? I, um, Ariana said at some point she was like, tbd on Anne's journey or whatever oh right i mean it's almost too good of a plot line <laughs> like entering written sitcom plot line yeah. to, to for that to happen so i feel like i feel like it would be interesting but uh, <laughs> the judge is like uh i order you to stay in the house and you share an assistant and yeah. you can't cross this line down the center yeah silly stuff <laughs> like that uh, i do understand why Anne wants to <laughs> switch sides i yeah. get it and uh she was very emphatic she was like i want this so bad and then i actually have to give ariana credit um instead of being completely spiteful like some would be she was like you know you know the only um you know the only uh, downside of that would be that i don't want tom sandoval to get pissed off and think that i'm like poaching people from him which i was kind of surprised that she would even give him that mm -hmm. ben you know benefit of not just taking his assistant right. from him kind of yeah evolved take on that right but i think um if i was predicting i would say Anne jumps ship yeah i think because she posted team ariana on her instagram <laughs> i mean I, I don't know maybe she doesn't but yeah i would i would think that that would be kind of a interesting shift and they mm -hmm. should do that it would be fun yeah um so then we get another scene of lala getting juice with someone she meets up with schwartz for juice yeah so this sober curious thing is you wouldn't know it you wouldn't really know that this is a, a through line throughout the season but it is but they've been giving it such little spotlight but uh schwartz saying i'm sober curious it, and lala leading him through that journey 
is the reason why they keep having these scenes together, even right. though it doesn't, it's not, it's not what anybody cares about. And it's no. obviously, I think they dropped this, but yeah, this is another, like, this is an alternative to drinking. So let's have juice together. Right. Um, what do you think about, um, what do you think about, <laughs> what do you think about Schwartz and Lala's dynamic? It's weird. Like what's there? It's inorganic. They're, they're really, really awkward around each other for mm -hmm. people who have known each other for eight years. I think because yeah. they've never talked to each other one-on-one -on -one before. <laughs> yeah. But they have a lot of like stops and starts in a combo that you have with someone that you're just meeting for the first time. Right. Because like Lala and Sandoval, however, I don't know, labored that uh, relationship is based on her own goals or whatever, at least... Um, like she likes to go deep, like that's like her thing. Yeah. And so since Sandoval has been so, I won't say humbled, like I'm not saying he's he, humble, but he's been cut off at the knees. Uh, yeah. His life sucks. Right. Um, and so he's doing all of this self care or whatever, which is that like is Lala's interesting language. to her. Right. So whenever they talk, it's actually in, like engaging because she wants to like get down to business. Like she's like, let's talk about like our triggers and like yeah. vulnerabilities and like traumas and stuff like that. So whether or not it's bullshit or whatever, like it's interesting to watch because they can just go all the way in. Yes. Whereas her and Schwartz are kind of, it's just kind of like acquaintance level, like yeah. chit chat. And you're like, what are we doing here? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was stunned by how awkward their conversation was for people who have known each other for a really long time. Lala even has to explain herself when they're doing the shots of juice in each other's mouths. <laughs> Lala goes, you squirted on me. And then she goes, sorry, I have to do sexual, um, you know, I say sexual uh, jokes when I'm uncomfortable, mm -hmm. meaning that she's like uncomfortable right. just talking to Schwartz or whatever. And then, or I talk about my vagina and you see Schwartz is like, like, that's fine. That's great. I love that aspect of you. But it's like, you don't know this about each other. Like you guys can't even like get off the ground with your conversation because it's just so uncomfortable. You're right. talking to each other. Um, and also Schwartz keeps making a lot of like, um, like humor about like them being on a date and right. stuff. Like right. I'm almost like, oh yeah. Cause they were like, I didn't see what was, what they were talking about, but she was like, are those dates? And he was like, is this a date? Yeah. And he goes, just kidding law. But it's like they're, they he, he, throughout this episode, he keeps saying stuff like, I don't know, banter. Like he's like, um, you know, people know that I've had sex with Joe and Lala and I haven't had sex. And he says, yet like do you think is there any world <laughs> is there any world where lala and schwartz like each other no you don't think no lala schwartz doesn't like lala and lala doesn't like Schwartz, or like that way i feel like lala would never fuck schwartz she said that she would break his uh not to get explicit for a second but she <laughs> says she would break his dick off if they yeah. ever had sex she also said that um it was like right after she complimented Sandoval's dumpling latte, she immediately had to make it clear that she hates him and was like, even though I said his dumpling latte uh, was good and that I would fuck him for it, she was like, I think he has a needle dick. So you didn't get, <laughs> yeah, totally. So you didn't get the sense that their awkwardness was maybe because they are kind of like bonding with each other on another level that they've never done before? Uh, Schwartz? Schwartz and Lala. I don't. I I agree with everything you said about Lala and Sandoval. There's yeah. nothing there. But Schwartz and Lala, this chem, this awkward chemistry and the amount of jokes that Schwartz said about like like testing the line. I was just like, is there anything here? I mean, I know Lala would never do that for Kate, like to Katie. But yeah. I guess her and Katie aren't really in a good place. I was just like, <laughs> there's no part of you that thinks that Schwartz is attracted to Lala and Lala is not attracted to Schwartz. You don't think? I don't see it. I, but it's. It's not, I mean, it's not a, <laughs> it's just a dynamic that we've never seen before. So I feel like we're just sort of instantly putting the, deadening the impact of it. But there was just something, I don't know, there was something, I guess, I guess I'll just play, or I'll just um, give it the, the gloss of, this is just two people that are uncomfortable one-on-one. -on -one yeah. For now. I mean, it's hard to even know what her type is. I know. Because, like, so historically, there was James. She had a flirtation with Jack, so it was like bad boys. I don't know what you categorize Rand as, except for rich. Bad boy, <laughs> little stinker. <laughs> like um, bad boy in like the worst way. <laughs> yeah, bad boy. I mean, we you're you're right. We like don't the know. Don? 
the Don was her type. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know. I mean, I really don't. I so don't. So who knows if Schwartz fits in? I have no idea. Lala is a full mystery to me. Yeah. And even more so. At the end of this episode, I was just like, I don't. I don't know Lala, and I've said that before. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what she's going to say or do in any situation because I don't, like, I know Sheena pretty well, like, paraso- yeah. not parasocially, <laughs> like, as a viewer. Like, yeah. I, when she was a bully this episode, I knew how out of character that was for Sheena and mm-hmm. even that she'd be embarrassed by it. But where Lala is going to go with her decisions, I have no clue. Right. Uh, did you see that clip of Lala on, like, Jeff Lewis's podcast where he was like, I heard that you didn't take looks into factor with your sperm donor. And uh, she was like, yeah, because, um, you know, look at my last sperm donor and how my daughter turned out. She's beautiful or whatever. And I think that her daughter is very cute, but the comments all agree that she looks exactly like Randall. (laughs) The, The comment said that? Like every comment was like, she's Randall's clone. Yeah. I thought it was rude because I think Randall is handsome. Okay. Um, but yeah, you're, you're, I mean, I, that's just another thing that I just, I'm sorry. I don't believe, I I don't believe that Lala did not factor in looks. Yeah. I mean, you don't, right? <laughs> to my sperm donor. <laughs> yeah. When you're, when, I, cause we haven't talked about this, but you're going through this process. No, I'm just saying like, it just sounds like something Lala said. Right. To, to appeal a to talking a certain point. It's like. You didn't? Like, what do yeah. you mean? Like, they showed a photo and you said, <laughs> I will not even look at this person? Yeah, there's like, it's like, went to Harvard, speaks 10 languages, um, has other, uh, I don't know, has no health or mental illness in the family. Yeah. And then you look at them and they're like, the most hideous person it, you've ever seen. And you're like, ah! For it to be just not a factor, <laughs> I feel like it's just, it's like, it's just, she thinks it's endearing to say that, or she just says things and then has to like, I, I, I just like, there's no way that's true. Yeah. It's one of the 10 things that you, she said, she said, we've, I don't, I've, have I already ranted about this? But she was like, I, he said that he likes tigers and he loves the ocean. So that's how I made the criteria for him to be a sperm oh. donor. It's like, you're lying. You're oh, lying. Yeah. What it's were just, some of the uh, names uh, under Rampage, consideration? <laughs> um, uh, Bronco Buster. Wasn't it like Mighty or Mighty, something? Mountaintop. <laughs> Arrow, it was like, um, yeah, it was like, uh, yeah, Rampage was definitely one of them. Yeah. I hope she does something fucking buck wild. Just let's have fun. I kind of liked, um, I kind of like, I like Mighty Kent. <laughs> it's just. Uh, do you ever, I know that I've talked to your wife about this. There's this, uh, influencer, uh, who is like a trad wife, like a Mormon trad wife who like makes everything from scratch. Trad wife is like. <laughs> They go back to traditional <laughs> values. Yeah, like the gag is always like, I think she does it because she gets good engagement because people are always like, what the hell? But she'll be like, my kids wanted Pop-Tarts, so I made them from scratch. And she'll be like, get out like flour. Yeah. And then all the comments will always be like, your kid asked for a Pop-Tart and they got it like two days later because it like took you so long to make this. But anyways, one of her kids' names, her son, his name is Slim Easy. Slim Easy. That's kind of cool. Slim Easy. It's both names? Yeah, I think like what's, first and middle. What's giving trad about that? I know that is a little off kilter. Um, Megan always shows me, just yeah. to speak of my wife, she yeah. always shows me the person on TikTok that um, that predicts names. Do you ever yeah. get that? Uh-huh. Pretty good. Pretty yeah. interesting because she's, yeah. she's been it's right well a informed. lot of the times. Very well informed. And the decision making that she puts into finding out the aesthetics of people to choose that name is like really interesting. Yeah. Like deep, deep dive. Yeah. Um, damn. I was going to say something about <laughs> names, but I don't remember. Oh, I was going to say, is there any trad husband <laughs> talk where it's like you put on a raincoat and you put on a hat and you say goodbye, son and wife. Like revolutionary road style. Yeah. And you, and you go to the office for nine hours and you get back and you say, where's my dinner? And then you go to bed. That's like um, Josh on Roni where Total. he's like, where's my hot meal? That, was total trad husband <laughs> he was trad to a t <laughs> i i fully agree um yeah, great well that was a good she um, should name her son trad trad yeah. kent <laughs> it's giving sort of i i kind like it's kind of giving a little bit like chet trad yeah, or like chad it's kind of like chad do you um i never asked you this do you like lala <laughs> i've had quite a journey Me too. uh 
I feel like I've had times where like I appreciate her earliest era, which we are just starting to cover on the Patreon. Um, I love how how much she shook up the other girls and how pissed off they got about her yeah. like being like sexual and yeah. a threat to them and like they were pissed. They hated it and I thought that was fun. Mainly Katie. Yeah. And Katie called her a whore multiple times. Uh-huh. Um which I, you know, I do think it's a through line for Katie that people keeping like she says really horrible things about other uh girls. Like it's interesting to me that like she has for a large portion of the fan base is like this like bastion of yeah. feminism and like female strength. And I'm like, she's kind of been like very mean to a lot of the women on the show. But <laughs> this is new. This is new. Katie has been one of the most reviled cast members for like <laughs> six years. Yeah. From season five yeah. until season 10. Yeah. This is Katie now in a golden era. And I feel like p- fans are so forgetful yeah that they're like we love katie now what the hell is everyone talking about we absolutely <laughs> love katie it's like you probably hated katie four years ago yeah like i'm just like people aren't putting the full perspective of everything into right. their new opinions like yeah. you have to for a long time people absolutely despise katie yeah and then now they're like full stands yeah and they can't admit that like it's sort of bad on a public <laughs> in a public forum to say joe is a crackhead when, you know like lala yeah. said it she admitted it. yeah so i'm just saying it's like can't we just have like can nuance? We, can't we have <laughs> nuance where I say I love Sheena and I think about like that she's a good person ultimately, <laughs> but I found things she did this episode to be absolutely abhorrent. Yeah. But it doesn't forever change my opinion of her. Yeah. It's like that I, is how all humans are. I'm yeah. sorry. I saw a post recently that was like celebrating Katie and it was like the language was so over the top. It was like, like a phoenix, uh-huh. like rising, like we stand, like she's been holding it down all along and people finally realized. I was like, huh? It's like, watch the tape back. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? It's a total, huh? <laughs> it's, it's going on with James, which I'm tired of ranting about, but it's yeah. like, let's, Let's use this present era as a factor in our decision making on the overall character while still not forgetting the full spectrum <laughs> of what yeah. they've done. Yeah. And um, also it just just last comment, putting people on this pedestal, artificial pedestal which no one deserves, no one in humanity deserves <laughs> to be considered like a god. Mm-hmm. Like that everything they do is moral and perfect and good and you've always been on the side because all they can do is fall. Yeah. Let you down. All they can do is let you down. Katie will say something and people will be like, what the fuck did she just say? You know what I mean? What if it turns out that Ariana like is like defrauding orphans and widows? What will everyone do then? (laughs) People will turn on her so fucking fast. They'll be be like, like, I knew it. Be like, I never was into this whole Ariana redemption arc. People will be like, yeah, right. Like, what the hell are you talking about? Like something about her as a front for yeah. like uh, taking money from burn victims. Yeah. And that, and something about her is yeah, totally. It, <laughs> that could, I mean, that's obviously, you know, potentially always a factor. No, but I'm just saying like, even with something about her, when you have to sort of tiptoe about making fun of yeah. something about her. And then when James and Lala do it, when James does it, everyone's yeah. like, ha ha, we can all finally admit now that something about her is taking a long time. But it's like we feel uncomfortable even bringing in anything slightly critical about these vaulted figures, which yeah, is ridiculous. I know. I'm kind of that's why I'm like excited about I feel like this is the first episode that like we can like take a breath and be like, we are moving on yes. from the previous era. New things are happening. We're starting to be able to like, yeah, there's like three jokes about something about her. And I'm like, that's a tension that is there. I'm like, we have to all agree that like it's ridiculous. I understand like I I believe them that there's like permit issues or whatever, but it's like we spent an entire season making fun of Schwartz yes. and Sandys. We must do the yes. same now. It also, <laughs> in my opinion, it's not even that bad. Like even No, it's just call- funny though. Yeah, it's just funny. Like who cares? It's not <laughs> disparaging them to just say, Yeah, you like you're do, doing a repeat event at something about her with all the same sandwiches. And Lala said something about it. It's not that big of a deal. It's not an assault I mean, on their character. Even Ken said it. What did uh, Ken say? Lisa's like, I want to try that uh, 
green goddess or whatever. And Ken goes, again? Like, he did? didn't we already do this? <laughs> I didn't hear the again from Ken. And she, uh, Lisa's like, yes, like that was so long ago. We have to do it again. Lisa was good about it. Although she well, did. That's, she made everyone else do that shit for 10 years. So she she's knows. like, fine, I'll eat your sandwich. And also, Lisa was a little bit of a stinker. She was like, bring that sandwich plate to my place of business. Yeah. You all have to come to Sir with those sandwiches. They had to walk those sandwiches across to Sir so they could all have a scene there yeah. instead of something about her. Yeah. They were already sat. Yeah. down reciprocity I, yes uh but yeah she was like i i did enjoy lisa's business minute where she was like they've been play, paying that damn lease for a year they're gonna have to sell a shit ton of sandwiches which is what we're always saying and i loved the, the way lisa said sandwiches i was like this must be like a low um like yield item the way lisa mm-hmm. has like business restaurant brain she was like and it's sandwiches for god's sake you have to sell a shit load of sand- it's like whoa i don't know what lisa knows about like food prices yeah. or what you know but it's like obviously she thinks sandwiches are like you can't make money off right them. i mean without the booze i mean i think they are supposed to have wine and beer they're gonna have um they all at one point they were gonna have like white claws like <laughs> white claws and is that a different category lower yep um it's the seltzer spike seltzer category it's a huge loophole in um beer and liquor license. is that true <laughs> I'm like, like I believe why? you. I think I think seltzer has that to would be very funny if they had like uh just like this like romantic setting and yeah. like they can't have like rose, they have to have white claw. Yeah, just <laughs> only like, Well they are gonna have white claws, but I think white claw must be also part of they're gonna have trulies. I'm sorry. <laughs> Lover boy? Lover boy? Did you see Ariana posted um she was wearing a lover boy sweatshirt um backstage at Chicago? No. I was like, love that. That is awesome. Do you think Hubbard was pissed? Hubbard? hated it <laughs> hubbard wanted hub house pr or <laughs> hub house nashville yeah sweaters well, let's buy can we buy a hub house nashville sweater no <laughs> <laughs> okay so we, we just got you and i had a huge tangent oh i wanted to say uh to my like just my lala thoughts are that she i think lala is very funny yeah and when i again i think when she's pointed in the right direction i love what she has to say mm-hmm. i have a problem of i think lala has a false persona that she puts on to protect herself and she has trouble being genuine for some reason i don't know why and that's the divide i feel with lala where i don't fully know if she believes what she's ever saying which is kind of what right. we talked about with the um you know about everything yeah she's going through i'm interested i mean i'm very curious with how this is going to play out and if i do believe her generally about her journey that she's talking about so i'm curious of like what she'll be like on the other end like if there's a next season will she be different yeah what um uh, her journey is to be softer and not be haunted by her past and not treat everyone in her life un like they're untrustworthy because of what she went through right that's her journey and she doesn't want to feel that way with Schwartz she doesn't want to feel that way with Sandoval so I kind of get it maybe that is sort of reconciling her true feelings with what she presents to the world because I think the the disengage Lala is Mm -hmm. maybe what she's trying to yeah it is interesting though that she um (laughs) she's gone from she's trying not to be triggered by men specifically because of what happened to her uh but it seems like she's now um, swapping that a little bit to be like, I guess she's trying to say like that the other girls should do the same. Like, it just feels like she's being very hard on Ariana for reasons that I don't quite understand. <laughs> like, she just tries to call her out at every turn. Yeah. Which like, I'm down for someone to question things so that we have more angles to look at. But it, she's just kind of, kind of coming off as a hater at this point. Yes. Um, yeah, and we'll we'll get to it. Um, but I think she entered hater territory officially when she derided the something about her sandwich shop scene <laughs> yeah. in her confessional. I think that was the turning point because she had to know when she said that that Katie and Ariana would be pretty livid about right. how she was talking about. Yeah, it. she also says like, Ariana, you're good. You can afford an apartment. Yeah. You know, like, why is it taking her so long to get out of there? Yeah. So they were sitting down. They just juiced, you know, sh- juiced shots into their mouths. <laughs> and then uh, Short starts to move the conversation to Jax and Tom getting over sort of their grievances. And then that's when uh, Schwartz talks about how he's in a post-Scandival brain fog. 
And that's how he tees up that he's starting to wonder why Scandaval is getting this sort of special treatment in the legacy of all of the cheating in their history. Right. And he says, we've all cheated. We've all done horrible things. I mean, he says specifically, like, like Lala's cheated. Like, they all have cheated mm-hmm. in some way. And uh, he says, you know, that's when he brings it up. He says, he says, I mean, I, 12 years ago, I made out with Sheena in Vegas. And yeah. no one even knows that. <laughs> and then I think he's trying to barrel through like a train, keep uh-huh. going. But Lala has the audience reaction to that, yeah. which is, what? Yeah. She's like, wait, when? Where? What? And he says 12 years ago, which I, I'm so interested in the time that they all said this was. Because yeah. 12 years ago is very specifically before Vanderpump Rules started. Just before. Okay. Like 12 years ago. Yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah. this is, that would be at the start of Vanderpump Rules. Right. It, it started in what, 2013? Right. Yeah. She said on the after show that it was like, in her timeline at that time, she said the show had been on for like one season. So she thought when Schwartz pulled her to the side that it was to avoid uh, fans she's, seeing them talk or she's something. Li- she's lying. <laughs> she's lying. She says it's after her and Shay got in. They're, they're using 10 years to the audience to, uh, to uh, muddy the water and gaslight <laughs> when this actually happened because they're just saying – this is the past. Why would anybody care right. what happened 10 years ago? The problem is we saw what was going on 10 years ago. Yeah. It's there for everyone to see. And yeah. The fact that Sheena he- withheld this huge revelation yeah. is very bad. We know the era <laughs> that this happened in. And she says she she gives the timestamp. It was after her and Shay got engaged. Yeah. That happened season three. Yeah. They have Tom Schwartz talking about making out with someone in Vegas yeah. to Katie. We so, need to get, uh, let's look up the records for dance competitions in Vegas and yeah. search her sister's name. We'll find out exactly what when it was i'm sure somebody already did this but i <laughs> i'm i'm positive it was in the season three era and i think yeah. he said 12 years because he is pretending like he doesn't remember anything about this which again i think that's a great excuse for him the blackout yeah make blackout make out that's his thing i mean yeah i, I don't know i would get that checked on you, every <laughs> time you black out you just fully make out with people and you never remember it that's like yeah. that's a wild thing to be a part of your character yeah i always really i always thought he was possibly browned out or used it as an excuse so that that katie wouldn't get mad at him by just saying i blacked out and made out yeah but yeah he he has no he has no memory of this he he says right he said um she's like uh she uh, lala's pissed that sheena never told her and then uh she's like did you ever tell katie and schwartz is like i don't know if i ever told katie i'm like you don't know yeah and she goes you don't know. And he goes, no, I don't think I did. And she goes, you're fucking dead. Right? <laughs> yeah. He also, he says uh, in his confessional, okay, so I'm going to give, I'm going to give some credence to the Schwartz brought this up organically mm-hmm. by just saying that I really, I, and people can completely let us know. If you think that this was an Alex Baskin producer moment and Schwartz was doing the producer's work, I understand. But I do think he, because it meant nothing to him and Katie and him are out of a relationship for so long. And he said 12 years, like it might've been before the show started. I do think he just thought it was worth bringing up. And he says it's false equivalency. And he also thought it was the summer of forgiveness, right? (laughs) That everyone Uh would get over this. But do you think, are you pretty steadfast to thinking that this was brought up to, to boost the power of this season? I just don't know why he would throw himself under the bus like that. I think because he does not understand the impact of what he said. And Lala has the correct, uh, imp- like what it means, a reaction to it. Like uh-huh. she's like us reacting to it. Yeah. I just, I think that Schwartz as part of his character is like, um, I, he doesn't think anything is that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. And he really thought that this is something that was just so innocuous and silly that it didn't need to be brought up. But right. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, what I'm more confused about, really confused about, is why Sheena ever would remind him of it. Right. It sounds like he fully forgot. Yeah. And he would have never brought this up. But the fact that she reminded him at that holiday party six months ago or whatever brought it all back to the forefront. Like, Sheena, you did yourself dirty there. <laughs> Maybe it was a long con. And she was like, I'll remind Schwartz. And he'll bring it up. Why would <laughs> Sheena want this to be brought up? It makes her look good very... for the show. Sheena, 
I, Sheena wants to appear good on the show. I don't think Sheena takes character bullets for the show. I think she is, she makes unself-aware decisions that make the audience repulsed mm -hmm. sometimes, but she, she's the hero in her own narrative, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you don't, she's not actively trying to make herself look like a villain. I mean, some of the decisions she made this episode, you'd wonder if she <laughs> is making that, but I think she's yeah. trying to, right? I mean, she's yeah. trying to appear cool and fun. Right. Why would you want to let why would you want to let the world know that she betrayed Katie at a very pivotal time in their relationship? And you know what I mean? That's why this whole thing is wild. I don't know. Uh, yeah, let's when you and I have Alex Baskin on for the <laughs> softball segment. Yeah. Can that be the fastball question? Yeah. If he propositioned them. If Alex. <laughs> what happened at that evolution meeting? Did you say I know rumor was going around that Sheena and Schwartz <laughs> kissed. I think, Schwartz, you have to bring that up to bring some yeah. power to the season. Yeah. I, I don't know. Okay. Let us know what you think, you guys, because I, I, I haven't seen the discourse. Yeah. Um, um, and, yeah, but you're right that Schwartz has to know once Lala hears it and once he hears Lala's incredulousness that this is going to be a factor. Mm -hmm. Like, it's going to instantly get to Katie. He has to know that. Yeah, which the very next scene... It's Lala and Katie. Katie brings tequila mm -hmm. over to Lala's place. Lala is drinking what I think is a non-alcoholic wine. Um, and she immediately tells Katie, she's like, I was getting juice with Schwartzy. And uh, he told me a little story about uh, him and Sheena making out in Vegas. And Katie's like, wait, what? Yeah. When? Like, she's immediately like, when was I not in Vegas with him? Yeah. Also, uh, Lala does uh, Schwartz um, not a solid by saying it was a few years ago. That's how she <laughs> said, that's how she, he said 12. Yeah. She says a few years ago. So that makes Katie think like season eight, right. season seven. Like, yeah. when, like, when did it happen? Like, towards yeah. the end of our marriage? Like, Lala, that was not, that was not a proper <laughs> uh, recitation of facts yeah. to Katie. And um, then Katie's like, wait, because they show the clip of them in the alley where um, he denies sleeping with someone. But then when she brings up that he made out with one of Sheena's friends, he says, that's not bullshit. Like, actually, I will cop to that one. So now Katie's like, when you said it was Sheena's friend, was it low key Sheena? Yeah. Or was that a totally separate incident? Yeah. I, um, yeah, I, I, I think... We don't, we, we need to know, I guess, I mean, I don't know. I guess we know the, all the facts of it, right? I mean, pretty much, but it mm -hmm. still feels like there's some mystery right. <laughs> here as to what the hell is going on. Yeah. And Katie's like, there's so many lies in this group. It's hard to keep track. Yeah. I feel like, um, Katie is just, um, just so stunned by mm -hmm. this, that she can't fully wrap her head around it in this scene that yeah. this really happened. Yeah. I, uh, again, it's like. I feel like she's never really liked Sheena. I know. Ever. I know. Um, so I feel like in this instance, uh, I understand if you already didn't necessarily trust someone, and then you hear this, you're like, okay, you're knocked back like three steps. <laughs> like, I really don't trust you now. Um, but I also feel like she's like, great, I'm going to hold this against you because I already don't like you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, as of last season, Katie and Sheena, hated each other yeah and katie called sheena a little troll so it was only until this season that they were starting to rebuild again and mm -hmm. this is i mean i think katie's probably just like it's reinforces her opinion that she's always had of sheena like yeah. i can't trust this mm -hmm. person yeah um so then we go to hotel ziggy yes schwartz and joe arrive together there's sheena and brock tom and kyle chan ariana uh katie um Tom can't even resist saying that Ariana looks great. He's like, love that dress for her. Yeah. He and goes, I'm like, I bet he misses. I don't know if this was their dynamic, but I could picture them having like a Kim Kanye thing where he liked to pick out clothes for her. Like um, James and Allie. Exactly. Right? Yeah. James does that. That was funny. Allie says, right? Yeah. Allie um, apparently doesn't give a shit about clothes. No, I, we didn't. I, I didn't know that. Um, yeah. But yeah, you're right. Sandoval is stopped dead in his tracks. And he goes, Brock, he goes, I got to talk to Ariana tonight. She hasn't written me an email back when I sent the letter of intent to sell the house. So I think this would be a good time to ask her if she's checked her emails. And Brock goes, 
you guys gotta talk. <laughs> Absolutely, you should talk to her at Hotel Ziggy. It's like, I can't believe <laughs> that Sandoval, this is an I can't believe mm-hmm. moment, but I can't believe Sandoval, knowing that he wanted to do this, talk to Ariana in a scene where he could have done this at um, the Belmont. Yeah. He didn't do it. He decided not to do it. Can't believe that's the, his shot that he shot at Ariana to get her to have a scene with him or to talk to him even for more than three words or yeah. five words that she says to him. Such a stupid, stupid way to start a conversation with Ariana. Yeah. No, no, matter, no matter what your intention was, if you legitimately really wanted her to respond to an email, which I give no credence to that. Yeah. Um, but just for you to have the first time where you talk to Ariana, be like, hey, did you check your email recently? It's like... <laughs> What a dumb way to start it. Yeah. You could have done anything in the world. Yeah. Could have been like, love that dress for you. <laughs> I absolutely love the dress. You look stunning. And I feel like an absolute goofball for how I treated you. Anything <laughs> to acknowledge the severity of, of their disconnect or what he did to her or even start with like the most heartfelt apology. I know Ariana wouldn't be receptive to any of this shit, but this was like the worst floundering of right. the start of a conversation ever. Yeah. And, and, and he definitely just, he wanted a moment with yeah. Ariana while she was unrestricted from him. He yeah. had, he knew all he had to do was walk over to her and have a, and, and it would be a powerful scene. Right. But he just, it was just such a stupid way to start it. Yeah. Very awkward. Yeah. Also, she said on the after show that his letter of intent was giving legal zoom. Yeah. And that it was like at like total garbage. She said it was written in crayon. <laughs> Did you hear that part? She said it had jelly stains on it. And it was written in crayon. And uh, jelly pens with was, the glitter. Yeah. She goes, she goes, I don't think this is legally, um, <laughs> it adheres to the law because it was written in different types of colored crayons. Um, also, I want to say, now this is the part where I get to be mean. This is the um, down and dirty stinker minute that you coined <laughs> okay. on Patreon. Yes. Down and dirty stinker minute. Yep. Uh, in the uh, people absolutely hate Sheena now. Yeah, uh, they hate her more than life itself. You should see TikTok. Oh God, it's like they're like Sheena is the worst person in the world. She's pure evil. I don't agree with that at all. I've always been a Sheena uh, sympathetic fan of Sheena. I think she's a good person, but her bullying Joe, yeah, was abhorrent mm-hmm. and despicable. Yeah, and she should be. She should really, really uh, regret how she treated Joe. I thought it was um, awful. Yeah. I feel like they, it was interesting that none of them cared about how they would come off. Yeah. Like I understand that they don't like her and they have plenty of examples of how she's been not trustworthy and like shitty in the past or whatever. But I'm like, you would think they would have a better handle on the fact that they would come off poorly in the scene. Sheena. The, okay. So what, well, I'll say what happens and I'll say yeah. my take on it. Sheena immediately with her friend Madison. Sheena's bringing a lot of friends around. Tori, mm-hmm. Madison, like they're kind of like helping Sheena out. Yeah. And it's even weirder that we don't know this person that is uh, also taking part in this bullying. That right. she like brought friends to be with her doing this. But Joe put on a hat. She had braids on, but she put on a hat. Tom Tom hat. Tom Tom hat, which, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, we'll get into that. Um <laughs> Uh, it gets taken off. Sheena says, why aren't you showing off your beautiful hair? Similarly to what you said last <laughs> week, why can't a hairdresser show off their beautiful, beautiful work on their own head? <laughs> Obviously, hairdressers have the best hair. Right? So She, she goes, was deeply offended. Yeah, who? Sheena. Sheena, she Sheena was acted like, like, like she goes, she, go, she made it like, obviously, like that was the, the bridge that was too far for her, but whatever. She was being a bully and she knows it. She even said the word bully. She takes the hat off her head they hide it. They put it behind their back. They go, They go. show your hair. Show your braids. They're beautiful. Madison, it, it, obviously, they're lying to her. And Madison goes, I love you, but you can't have your hat back. It's like, I love you. And there's all this giggling, like smiling while they're being mean to her that's like sickening. Like yeah. they're saying, I love you. They're smiling. Like, but they know that they're being mean to her and treating her badly. Yeah. And Joe has kind of a sad confessional where she's like, I like my hat. I feel comfortable <laughs> in it. Please chill. Don't do this. And I'm very, I'm, I'm anti-bullying and, and people can say um, it's justified or whatever. But since when do we say they did something bad to, to you? So absolutely you do bad to them. Yeah. Because is that the world that we <laughs> The golden in? rule. The golden rule, the exact opposite of what everyone is told. And I think that Sheena, it is so out of character for her to be mean that it's actually more repulsive um, because Stasi and Katie have mean 
Like they can be mean. And when it's justified, you're like, damn, they stood their ground. They hate this person. And they're actively treating this person because they dislike how this person acts in the real world. And it's more justifiable for Sheena to put on this mean girl persona. It's yeah. actually more repulsive to me because I know it's not her true character. Yeah. She was just trying to butter up Katie or appease the audience. Like, hey, we're all going to hate on Joe, right? Right. Like, and I felt, I, I felt like that was just, um, yeah. Uh, awful because it's not in Sheena's nature to do that. Right. Like she was immediately pissed off. Like there, she was saying, look at them. They're dating. Why are they acting like they're not dating? And then she brings up that Joe was on that big bear trip um, where it was seemingly like a double date yeah. trip. Yeah. And then Schwartz and Joe left them behind so that Tom and Rachel just were alone in big bear. Yes. Um, so that's their that's their evidence. That's their evidence, or that's their case in point mm -hmm. to, for why Sheena can treat Joe badly. That's what she is sticking to. Yeah. And then Ariana also gives us, I thought, carte blanche for the audience to hate Joe. Yeah. By saying, lest you forget, Joe is a mean girl to her core and a bully because she went to Thanksgiving dinner at my house and she knew that an affair was happening and she didn't tell me, which I, I believe it. Yeah. I, I, that is a huge point against Joe and her character. But I don't think, I don't think that justifies bullying her. Yeah. Like I, I just, I, I, I don't. Making <laughs> someone cry. I mean. You disagree that she's a rat girl? <laughs> i um i i there's a that insult did make me laugh because i'm like what does that even mean they katie thinks she looks like a rat well that's sad if it's her appearance how else would you take it oh i mean I'm like snitch rats are industrious they are smart <laughs> rats get such a bad rap um, or did she mean she's the kind of girl that would own a rat Ooh, like a she's horse giving girl rat girl, rat girl in, in honestly high that fits Oh, okay, if it's giving rat girl and it's not that she looks like a rat or that she's a snitch, <laughs> Katie, you tell us. You, this is obviously going to be a provocative episode. You tell us. Did you mean she's the kind of girl that owns a rat, even like though we a, know she owns a turtle? snake. Yeah. Snake girl. Yeah. Rat girl. I can see it. Um, she also calls her a psychopath. Uh, she says, I actively will make her uncomfortable so she doesn't get to join this group. Katie yeah. is letting her feelings be known, but for some reason, I, I'm fine with how Katie is treating Joe. I feel like Katie, <laughs> fine to an extent, because uh -huh. it's more justified to her to have a grievance against Joe. Yeah. I feel like Joe or Sheena was out on a limb trying on her own to have this bullying grudge against right. her. Katie is- Even Lala was like, damn, Sheena, you're an icy little bitch, aren't you? Like, why are you going this hard? Lala said that, and I loved it. She goes, damn, Sheena, icy little bitch. She's never <laughs> seen Sheena like this. Yeah. Honestly, Ariana's advice to, say, to let the world know that Joe is- uh, mean and shitty to her even ariana wouldn't treat her like sheena treated her she might say permission to treat joe like shit but even ariana herself would not treat joe like that yeah she would be upfront with her she would say why she doesn't like her she would say how much that hurt her but she would never just be like name calling treat yeah. her like shit like ariana i don't think would have that evil bully energy that i felt like sheena harnessed for yeah. one second in my opinion yeah ariana's like reserved like she doesn't really say much she would she would tell joe <laughs> why she hate why she hates her right um did you also what did you think about uh <laughs> joe said that specifically uh being called a crackhead was hurtful as someone who has add yeah which i'm like i don't know if that's quite what she was referring to i think it's a reach i think it's when <laughs> it's when uh yeah it's when people try in confessionals to like make an offhanded insult like more egregious because it's like they make it like an insult against people with disabilities yeah. or whatever you know it's like you know that's not what she meant she was mad at you she, she just called hates you, a, you she called you a crackhead it's like I just think like that, could be offensive like just anyway like most people would consider that joe offensive. was like joe was like my grandma called and she was on katie's twitter and she said joe is it true are you a crackhead <laughs> crackhead we don't we don't say crackhead anymore no i it's feel like, like uh, it got out of our lexicon yeah the crack, crack epidemic has ended and we're moved on to opioids. Yeah, it's op, op um, <laughs> hophead. 
<laughs> is that what they say? Hophead. You used to, when people were in like the Nick Dope era, fiend. Dope fiend. We got to bring that kind of back. I think there is a hophead over there. He's high on opioids. <laughs> uh, like, have you seen Joe is like high on heroin? Yeah. Right. It would be like, yeah, it wouldn't be fun at all. Crackhead is just like, a, a, it's like rat girl. It's like an insult that um, Katie has not let leave her right. insult repertoire uh, please comment if you um agree that you think that she has the essence of a girl who would own a rat yeah and that's not disparaging i right? think rats make good pets i don't am like... i a rat girl i don't have a rat but i i wouldn't not have a rat let's reclaim <laughs> rat girl and rat boy and certified rat girl t-shirts certified rat girl but is that going to be in conflict with our turtle energy that we are claiming another rat animal? time rat time. well down and dirty stinker minute could be called the rat hour or the rat minute too it's like you know what i mean i do love ratatouille Ooh, i've never i've only seen it once it's good that was sort of destigmatizing to rats making food because my initial impulse i was grossed out yeah i was like i was like a rat in the kitchen making food gross <laughs> but then when you realize he's sweet he washes his hands right yeah it's like isn't that like a low-key fact like rats are sanitary or something that is ridiculous <laughs> that's like that's like that's, that's like rat dogs. girl pr that's like that's total <laughs> joe is in the work saying rats are actually clean or maybe it's, it's like, possums it's like when they say dogs have a cleaner mouth than humans and you can like eat off a dog's mouth have you smelled mouth. a dog's mouth what? Have you smelled a dog's mouth no, lately? It's, like, it's just one of those stupid things that people just say that they don't actually think about. Rats carry disease. It's their Yeah, main maybe I was thinking thing. of possums. I think um, they're the ones that don't carry disease. They <laughs> probably do. They do. Okay, I'm a possum girl. Possum girl. I, I'm, I, get, I get shivers when I see a possum. <gasps> they're sweet. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. Possum PR. I know we have a lot of opossum heads that listen, but I cannot help my visceral disgust when I see an opossum. <gasps> no, oh, I'm, we feed ours. Oh, okay. I'm fine with feeding them. Oh, really? Does it come every day then? Well, at our old house, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't have... Okay. Maybe I'll have a possum minute. Would you do you mind <laughs> would you, certified possum minute? Do you mind? Can I come here at around two a.m. when you put a can of tune out for your possum, and I can have sort of a one-on-one -on -one <laughs> to yeah. get over my possum yeah. stigma? They eat. They're good for the ecosystem. They eat Rats. bad bugs. Okay, and um, they're net positive. Here's what I'll do. I'm gonna do something that grows a bunch of fur on their face. And their tail mm -hmm. that makes them not look like overly sized, ugly rats. They have jiggy tails. They have jiggy tails. I just, there's something about me that I'm, when I see one, I, yeah, I, 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 they haven't gotten to a comfort level for me. Okay. And every time we need I to do one, some exposure therapy. Yeah. That's what I, I said. If you don't mind, I'll come here at 1 a.m. You can just leave the can of tuna out for me and I'll have a flashlight okay. out there. You can crawl on all fours. That's, Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, um, so we, we got the bullying. Um, did I say, did I make my feelings express that I think <laughs> that people can be mean to people that have caused them harm, <laughs> but bullying, like yeah. how Sheena did, was uh, offensive to my sensibilities. Right. I mean, and also, I mean, they knew that, you know, the group of those girls versus the, you know, down and out group that is joe and billy lee and t and yeah. like all these other people i'm like they know that they're s scary yes. like they know that yeah but I, okay i have a question there's a big question i have for you i don't know why it's a question i really have but why does joe want to be on this show <laughs> good question what is the what is the point and i'm not being offensive joe i mean you obviously you loved last week's episode um when you're listening to turtle time but why would you want to be on a show where you know one person on it, Schwartz, and everyone else hates you on yeah. it, actively hates you, and thinks that you did something morally wrong to all of them and are treating you like shit? Do you want to be a cast member on this show? Right. And how would that work? Mm -hmm. what, are you going to slowly make your way into the group and be a main cast member? I just don't understand why she, she hate, clearly hates it, and they're all treating her like <laughs> shit. Why yeah. would she go to Hotel Ziggy? Right. Well, it's like... And I'm not even saying like, oh, you got bullied out of there. You can't like, you can't go where people hate you. But it's just like, as a, on a personal level, why did Billy Lee and Joe 
want to be on except for the fact that they just want to be on Vanderpump Rules. I mean, I know right. why Billy wants to be. <laughs> she wants to be on Vanderpump Rules more than anyone in the history of anyone has ever wanted to be on reality, reality television. But Joe, I'm like, I don't know. Why? Why yeah. did you want to go to Hotel Ziggy? To right. be a cast member? Yeah. I mean, she very quickly had to um, cover her ears with her hands and was just like having a full meltdown trying to avoid uh but i hearing get, judgment but and, i get that i mean she's she's right next to her she's hearing rat rat <laughs> rat look hey rat girl rat, rat girl i hate her look Classic at her hair rat girl i hate her hair have you seen it yet <laughs> wait till she takes off her hat how there's a rat times, underneath there's a rat under her hat how many <laughs> how many uh tom rat tom under the hat there's rat, a rat under, under the, the hat, hat. And she's like, la, 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 I don't want to hear it. Rat under Everyone's the like, are you okay? And she's like, I gotta go. T goes, drama free zone over there. Like, in, in no world have we ever seen a Vanderpump Rules scene where someone is actively covering their ears so they don't hear the disparaging, horrible shit that people are yeah. talking about. I um, mean, cut back to Lala's first I, season. Exactly. She has to fly home to Utah because of the bullying. Exactly. Lala, that you can, you do you know why Lala didn't go there? Yeah. And, and is calling Sheen an icy little bitch. Lala <laughs> didn't go bully Joe for no reason. Talk yeah. about growth. Right. And um, then this should be, um, you know, awful for anyone to see Joe. Uh, after covering her ears, starts crying, and then has to walk away while Billy Lee escorts her, and she she runs to a bathroom to cry. Yeah, and you even see a glimpse of I forget if his name is Jeremy or Jerry, the producer uh, follows her uh-huh. to like comfort her slash try to get her back into the scene. I don't know what he was doing, but he's there. It was like yeah. a full almost fourth wall break. Yeah, Schwartz runs after her. He calls her Joseph. Uh, he's like, what's wrong? Which I'm debating. Um, I feel like, uh, I think it was Kristen on the after show that said that even though she hates Joe, she does feel bad for her that Schwartz seemingly like strung her along. Yes. Which I'm like, it's true. Like, is that, um, like a big mark against Schwartz? Aw shucks. Like, is he like completely misleading this person? And that's why she's on the show because she wants to be with him. Yeah. We, we, I think we said it that, um, Joe wants to be in a relationship with him and he is like teasing her that that is an eventuality with him while clearly he doesn't want that to happen. So yeah, he's yeah. leading her on. So like her being on the show is a great way to bond with him, obviously. Yeah, and also the people that are like letting Joe in, like Allie is saying that she, he's she's Schwartz's friend slash they think it's possibly a budding relationship. Right. And that's why they're bringing Joe to these events. But it doesn't seem like Schwartz thinks that at all. Mm-hmm. Another yeah. alternate theory for Joe is that she was brought up so much at the reunion that producers said, let's get Joe in here. Would she yeah. want to film? Right. Just so that she could have potentially an antagonistic, uh, running, long running conflict with Katie. Right. Um, Lala tells Ariana about Schwartz and Sheena's makeout. Ariana's like, well, I know that I made out with uh, Sheena in Vegas. Um, and then uh, this is when Tom cruises over and is a, uh, Asking about his email to he Ariana. Goes, She's like, my lawyer has it. He goes, he goes, he's like, have you been having a problem with Gmail lately? I, <laughs> Do you I've, check your spam? <laughs> I, he's like, I've been having some issues where emails don't, you know, come into my inbox. Are you sort of going through that? And she goes, my lawyer has it. Yeah. Um, and he's like, oh, um, okay. I just want to move on. with." And Lala's trying to like keep him there for another minute. And it's like, what is he talking about? Like, what is this about? Ariana goes, house. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, well, anyway, yeah, I just do. I thought it would be good to like, you know, I don't know, sort of like wrap this up. Anyway, I'll leave you to your thing. He's like, he's like just spinning, like running yeah. on steam. I will say I, whenever she talks about her side of the legal or business money stuff, I'm like, I believe her side uh, much more. And I believe that her legal counsel is superior. And yes. uh, now that it's in her hands, I assume it will be handled much quicker. Yeah. She's like probably looking at the emails and it says, um, it says Billy Lee Esquire. What are lawyers called? Esquire? Yeah. Yeah. It says th- sent through the law offices of Billy Lee Esquire. Billy and Lee. She's and like, Lee. The- <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah. It's just like, I think that, I think that Tom Sandoval has um, in his, at the very least, for his character, we have learned that he doesn't do things properly. At yeah. the very least, we know that he's 
even if you're the biggest Sandoval defender, which, you know, there is a contingent of you, 5% of the Vanderpump <laughs> rules, you have to admit that you have to admit he's irresponsible probably and doesn't yeah. do financial shit according, like, by the book. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so then, oh, yeah, he also reveals uh, Tom is talking to T and says his first job in LA was a pool boy at the Sky Bar Little next door. That was new, fun. New, um, new um, element to the canon. Yeah. It's like, he was a pool attendant and she goes so you must have been really thirsty and i said to myself i said <laughs> what because you drink the water at a pool yeah i don't get it uh also tom and t have no chemistry and no. i don't feel um <laughs> i have no qualm saying it it was the big it's the biggest dud relationship i've ever seen yeah. and it was so bad that they have to make their bowling scene a flashback yeah. tom on his first date <laughs> out into the wild was so bad that they couldn't even show the full thing also i don't know what his major malfunction is but he goes uh the place it's like we're going bowling and it's like 70s so i wanted to dress 70s and i was like oh i wonder what uh bowling alley that would be and then they show it and it's highland park bowl which if anything is like turn of the century steampunk themed yeah, they show it and it i was has... like there's nothing 70s about it if in the slightest I, yeah, I have no clue and we'll never know. We saw that. I can't believe that that scene where he spins around and dances and does like a Saturday night fever move was just a shitty flashback with T. I can't, I, I can't believe this T shit. I think that he just, it, it's, uh, I mean, it's horrible. I don't think he's invested in this at fake all. Fake news. Yeah. I think it's total fake news. What else happens at hotels? Like, oh, um, oh Katie and. Katie and Sheena. Um, that was a big deal. Yeah. Because Katie. Uh, bring Sheena over. Sheena has no clue. I think has no clue what Katie was going to talk about with right. her. I think she's hashtag blindsided. Yeah. By what Katie brings up. Katie says, I don't know how to bring this up to you because this was just like thrown at me. But I heard that you and Schwartz made out. Right. And Katie or Sheena has to do damage control immediately and correct the record. And that's when she says, here's what happened. We were at a, what was the cheerleading? Celebrating the end of a cheerleading uh, competition. Yeah. I was with my mom and Ariana and Schwartz. Right. What's Why the... was Schwartz there? Did he happen to be there or something? I, I don't know. Yeah. And Katie doesn't know any other time except this one, potentially, that he was in Vegas without her. Right. But anyway. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Just... We just had the scariest <laughs> thing in the world happen. Let's pause and take a break. <laughs> Sorry about that. Amy and I just got served by Billy and <laughs> Lee and Lee. Esquire. And I just want to say, I kind of want to correct the record a little bit. I think Billy Lee sort of really handled herself well in that scene with Joe. She should become a, an official cast member. Uh, yeah, I feel like, uh, yeah, I love Billy Lee. Anyway, <laughs> um, so what, oh, oh, sorry, Sheena and Katie is where we were at. Yeah, um, um, Sheena's like, obviously, I wouldn't have told Katie about what happened there at that time. It was peak uh, tequila katie and she hated my guts in that era and she already was uh branded a mistress which is you know how the show started and she was like i wasn't gonna fuel that fire which i get okay you do okay you do at least in that time they've never the thing is they've never well i guess they keep bringing up that she was a bridesmaid yeah i mean well okay i i believe in telling the truth, especially when they became friends. I think you're right. Initially, at the full hatred, why would she ever... T I mean, man, Schwartz is like... Um, <laughs> Schwartz said this was like retaliation or whatever. Like his, He said his brain, he purposely retaliates right. on Katie for treating him bad. The fact that he went for Sheena, Katie's enemy, to like make out <laughs> with is fucked up yeah. to Katie. And Katie said in the after show... I think I believe this. I trust her on this. She said that if I would have known that he went inside the friend group and made out with someone, I would have broken him up with him. Then right. We don't know. Right. But still, I mean, it's like, that is, it is a fact that Katie should have had to weigh in her decision-making process in her relationship with Schwartz. I, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I didn't really, I wasn't really buying Sheena's full defense of why she never told Katie. Mm -hmm. I think it was important, even at an era when they were doing good. They had season four, like they're doing good now in this era. Season five, like I, or, you know, I'm sorry, in the era that we're watching on Patreon, like they're doing good. Like there was a time to say, I think this. Right. And um, yeah, but I don't know. I just, don't, I don't know if I fully think there's any excuse for why Sheena never told Katie, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. It's kind of like a weird thing though, if you wait, like 
is it weird to bring it up like three years later? <laughs> like if you don't tell someone immediately, then when is it a good time to bring it up? I think, I mean, in my, in my opinion, like I care about it now and I think Katie cares about it now. So it's like, it's never too late. I mean, like we talked about with Miami girl, it's a different situation, but it really affects my opi- opinion of Ariana and Tom mm-hmm. pretty substantially mm-hmm. knowing the truth. Yeah. Despite it being t- 10 years ago right. or seven years ago. Yeah. So I, I guess I'm just like Schwartz. This was kind of Sheena's take was that he had been caught uh, having made out with so many girls over time that she was like, what's one more? Like, it's kind of like it's like Katie knows the deal. So yeah. adding in this one, like, it's not like she was like. She married him thinking that he had never made out with anyone. Yeah. And it's like he m- makes out with someone every time he drinks. So you already know that. But the, the truth, the truth is, the truth is that Sheena didn't want to tell Katie because it's horrible. <laughs> and she's scared. <laughs> and she's scared of Katie. It's like, that's it. You, yeah. can, you can say whatever you want, but we know Sheena. Obviously, yeah, you didn't but say But I can this. see finding that moral loophole of like, well, she already knows that he's made out with like 10 different girls. So like she has the facts before marrying him like it's not like it's not like i i i honestly i question katie she could let him get away with so much shit i think it's hard to say in retrospect she's pulling a newsroom she's saying (laughs) not a newsroom (laughs) saying if i was only there reporting on it the history would be completely different yeah because it's just like you can't even say that like you don't know i i mean you will you allow that it would be she, a he big dumped factor. a drink on her head and she didn't break up with him. All right, I mean, there's a world. There's a totally a world where I can <laughs> in say in a world, in a world like <laughs> in a newsroom, you know, version. I could imagine where that's just insult to injury, and and Katie takes it all in stride. But I I think we need look, a okay, simulator. Here, here's what I'll say Sim, for sure. We need a we need to have a matrix mode where we get to do a choose your own adventure within. <laughs> the universe of Vanderpump rules and make these decisions and, and, and plot these out. But people are saying, people say, are saying about Max Boyens. They're like, why did we need to know that? Like, why the hell do we, do, why did Brock bring it up? It's like, because we should know things like that. Yeah. Like we, if we're watching a reality show of these cast members, sure. what happens between the dynamics that will forever affect them all matters. Yeah. So I think, Sheena being truthful and honest at any point she felt comfortable it was obviously the right thing to do. And Katie, we can we can debate whether or not she would have made that a factor, but she should have had the option of weighing that factor mm-hmm. and knowing that her husband, in retaliation, tried to make out with a, an enemy of hers, like someone <laughs> that she actively hated at that yeah. time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's bad. Yeah. We should try. We need to keep our eyes and ears open and as we're in the season four timeline i mean i guess yeah, we've no. already passed that time no but i mean we should be thinking about it the whole time <laughs> i mean i i really um the real thing that is mysterious to me is why sheena wanted to bring it up again right you brought it back into schwartz's brain you right. you unearthed a buried memory and it's made like him un- unveiling a, a woolly mammoth carcass that might have ancient uh disease it's Exactly like that. I mean, is there a better analogy than that? Um, uh, okay, okay, so let's we 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 you and I are gonna have the longest episode. Of yeah, Turtle we need time. to move on. So w- w- did we we Hotel Ziggy had a lot of shit, but we yeah. rained all the juice out of it. Yes, that for was sure. Powerful. Um, yeah. Then there's a Lala James Schwartz and Tom hangout at Lingua Franca uh, on the LA River, which uh, I love when they come east. I love it too. I've heard very good things. Is that by Zebulon and Salazar? Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's further in. Like, uh, okay. I guess that would be further. south. Okay. Frog Town. Yeah. Though. Still, Frog Town. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I like this. I didn't really understand what the fuck they were all doing together at <laughs> it was all. It weird. Um, I, I, it was just, it's like, I, I think, I don't know what James is doing here. James mm-hmm. has a very weird relationship with Sandoval now where he kind of just sits in the corner in scenes with Sandoval, but he doesn't yeah. actively approve of him, but he doesn't actively disapprove of him. He just kind of is in scenes with Sandoval now. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Explain explain what's going on with I you two. I feel like it's like the James, Lala, and I mean, it's the Sandoval advocate corner. Yeah. And it's like uh, 
James and Lala are like, you know, they talk about breathing and meditation and stuff like they're all trying to grapple with their demons i guess so to yeah. speak so they're like yes. we will accept your journey Growth. because we are trying to do things like that ourselves rehabilitation corner yes you're right wow that's a new way to look about that but i do want to say again i want to say sandoval comes in he looks he's dressed like ace ventura and he's got a pep in his step and he goes i'm walking on sunshine oh and they go lala goes how was your day sunshine why do you look like the cat that ate the canary yeah why are we just singing and whistling a tune he goes oh, i've had a good day i was just running around i went to an air vent in ariana's room and i locked the dog in there and uh they, it had to he go ate to skewers put in skewers and it had to go to the emergency vet she's like it's like what and he tried to uh, again like uh get preempt history and be like yes. as we all know my, maya uh, gets into yep, it yep. ate 55 laxatives and took a shit on like the roof or something schwartz <laughs> goes we know he's with maya that is maya to a t she uh, she ate wooden skewers again what would you do you locked her in the room and she had to eat wooden skewers we've all been there it's ridiculous and also he doesn't say emergency vet right so then when ariana says it you're like god damn <laughs> yeah. this is sandoval's willful you know fake story right that we're watching in real time right um and then uh he tells lala or he tells the group he's been doing this breath work and he invites lala to join him to do this for some reason <laughs> yeah for some reason healing james, activity james doesn't get this invite right but. and lala's like i respect that i will consider it and will you allow me to sleep on it? And he goes, sleep away, Lala. <laughs> yeah. You can think about it if you want. And this was the clip. Like, they show him doing the clip. And it's the scream, the yeah. epic scream from the trailer. Yeah. Now, I'll just say, uh, before we started this episode, Amy and I did this breathing therapy. And it was <laughs> very therapeutic. Did you consider it an emotional orgasm? Well, I said that right after the time. I said, I agree with Tom. But uh, yeah, it was something I've never seen before. Of all the like kind of stuff I've seen in the Bravo universe, yeah. I hadn't seen that. Right. He was, he breathed in, in, out, in, in, out. It made his breathing very like sort of chaotic and yeah. unregulated. Yeah. And then the guy goes, right as Lala walked in, he goes, now let out the primal scream of all of your hurt. And I don't want to scream on Mike, but you feel, you hear all of this horrible screaming pain. And Lala kind of just raises her eyebrows and goes, what the hell did I, I mean, just Can you imagine into? walking in and seeing that? It was like very intense. And then, uh, the, and then the guy, Dr. Wu, I think his name was, goes, you've got a friend here. Just after Sandoval got done screaming his ass off and he goes, who? And I always thought it would be so funny if it was Lisa. Could you imagine if he she would? Took I would love to see her face. She has to go his, his uh, mask, and it was just Lisa that was waiting for him after hearing him scream. <laughs> anyway, um, right? I mean, what did you think? I was like, it was. I I don't have very many strong thoughts on the breathing exercise. Like, I think it sounds cathartic. Yeah. I like to scream my ass off with a blindfold on. Yeah, for a minute. I'm just again surprised that he thought that people wouldn't make fun of him for that. Like, he I think is all. He thinks that the best thing he can do is show that he's working on himself. Yeah. But um, obviously the internet's going to have a field day with that one. Yeah. It made him look, it's, it's a, it's a um, divisive act because people who think you're lame will say that looked really lame. And even people who are like, I love breathing exercises and I love Tom <laughs> Sandoval. You're not going to say that looked great. <laughs> um, did, was there any memes yet where, with that where it was like the feeling when um the you know like the americana memes like the feeling yeah. when you have to go on the 110 right. to the 101 and then it goes ah, yeah ah, when ah. billy lee knocks on your door in the middle of the day yeah have you is there <laughs> I uh, have I, it. maybe we have to do it yeah if someone if this is actually if we could if amy and i could ask little turtle cuties to make memes for us you know because amy and i can't do it <laughs> we don't know how to make memes and we don't have any time so if you want to make a the feeling when something with that screaming for turtle time we'll credit you forever yeah um so he makes lala a dumpling latte and she's like would... i've heard all about these yeah. and um yeah she said in the after show that it was bomb as hell and that she understands why ariana stayed as long as she did if she could get one of those every day yeah she said i would have sex with him in a new york minute if he kept <laughs> bringing me these and she goes just kidding <laughs> um, yeah, and then they have their little conversation outside about how um, it's not just what he did, that she's like generally triggered by straight yeah. men. 
And he said that he wants positivity. Um, and he's kind of like, you know what? I feel like this has been such a hard and crazy year, but I feel like it was supposed to happen. And maybe everything that happened to you was supposed to happen to you. And Lala's like, of course. Yeah. So they're in their, you know, spirituality corner. Uh, yeah. I, I want to say something about Lala's journey this episode. Um, Cause she talks about like not trusting people. And then she learns these new facts about Sheena as well as Katie. And I feel like Lala got to the point where it's like, can I trust anyone? Not just straight yeah. men. Like yeah. at the end of this episode, I actually really like, I mean, I, I'm just stepping ahead a little bit, but just so I can say this point, it's like, I think what Lala was so taken aback is that she's learning new things just like us about this group that she would have never suspected of them. And it's yeah. kind of blowing her mind at a time when she's trying to trust everyone again. Right. It's like the worst case scenario. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Sandoval says he appreciates her vulnerability and. I didn't, but I watched the scene twice because I was like, what are they saying yeah. here like i c couldn't it's vague truly understand what what this meant and i think it's just that they're going to like discount the past and start fresh while acknowledging that they might never be close because they never were close in the past right but sandoval says you know i want to be a better friend to you but they acknowledge that they've never had a good relationship yeah. so it's just like it's like sort of like put down the what's that expression put down the swords, swords. <laughs> and just let's treat each other freshly yeah anew yeah and why lala wants to do that with tom sandoval at this time is where people could be skeptical of her intentions i think yeah but let's just believe her for a second <laughs> that she just truly wants to start trusting again and sandoval is the best case worst case yeah. for who she could forgive to move forward the biggest challenge she's the He's the <laughs> biggest challenge for her. Let's yeah. let's take that as it is. Okay. Um, let's cruise quickly through something about her because we need to get to the big pinnacle moment of this episode. Much like Lala, let's <laughs> fast forward through the scene. Uh, yes. We can remark that James had a laugh out loud moment where he, um, it was just so nice they did it twice where something about her had all the same sandwiches eaten and I was very shocked that Lala called it boring yeah. and basically said, um, why are we having another scene with your sandwich shop? Did you shop like that open? faux fast forward DVR yeah. effect? Yeah. And there was That's some a first. Total first. And there was some shade in there. They were calling it the sandwich testing redux. And they were like, <laughs> um, sandwich testing has happens yet again for an unopened restaurant. <laughs> like they were being a little shady there. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. And so, yeah, they end the fast forward at a funny moment where uh, James uh, Schwartz is saying, we need like a hearty like hangover sandwich and uh james is like he needs a man which you know he loves a sloppy joe and everyone is completely stunned they he, can't believe it hey, talk about irreverent it hit him like a ton of bricks in there they were just like why were they acting like it was like the biggest insult in humanity i feel well first of all i didn't think it was that funny no yeah. offense i thought i feel like he kind of stumbled upon it <laughs> like you saw him like he's, he i feel like that's not what he was intending to say at first and then he was witch. like sloppy joe yes yeah he, yeah it, it was okay i think that the <laughs> scene was probably unfortunately not had a lot of impact and then when when uh james said that it 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 was a cathartic experience. Yeah, you all got to laugh for tension. a second. And then um, they and were then, like, you're crazy for that one. Sloppy Joe. <laughs> Schwartz is dating Joe. <laughs> They're like, was, she is sloppy. <laughs> She's a rat girl. Did a rat make this sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> he said it, not me. It was giving like very, it was a joke. It was very much just a joke, which you don't hear a lot of just like punch. Yeah. Line, you know, I whatever. mean, I guess when you think about all the details together that Katie has painted about Joe, she said, she seems like right. someone who drinks milk which Aww. I personally take offense to as a member of the 2%. We've, we've said it before. I'm a whole, I'm a whole milker. I, mean, I appreciate my cow's milk, you're, okay? You're never going to make me feel bad about drinking milk. I don't She's care how far She's just jealous because the... her gut can't handle yeah. it. She's probably an almond yeah. or an oat girl. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's so good for you. Why don't you look into My that? biome is popping off. Yeah, I can I, drink a gallon of milk, okay? I... I <laughs> Well, yes, there's nothing wrong with drinking milk. If you could see on YouTube, Amy and I obviously have a gallon of Creamy milk. Creamy coffee. Drink, and that sustains us for the entire Turtle Time episode. How do you think we talked Never for broken three a hours? bone. Never broken a bone. So much calcium. I think it's mean, and I'm, 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 I'm so glad you brought it up. She's probably getting paid by the nut milk lobby. No, totally. 
You know, milk, big milk, which we love, which we've never said it. We're a sponsor of milk. Dairy Farmers of America. They say you shouldn't even be able to call almonds and oats milk. They should be with a Y. And I agree. You wouldn't be buying oat M-Y-L-K, would you? The fact that they can use the milk brand name. Milk. I'm I'm absolutely fed up. And I think we all need to take a, a deep, hard look at these people creating artificial milks and what it means to the... Precious dairy farmers. We don't need to talk about how much water it takes to make almond milk. Okay. Can can we, that's another, that's another day, Amy. I don't, I can't even get into it. I get too pissed off when I drive down the five, the five North and I see the almonds. If you watch, it's basically a waterfall that they're using to to get almonds. I, I, do you mind? I'm sorry. Do you mind if we move on? We have to, um, but yeah, um, a a girl, a rat girl drinking milk. That's, uh, that sounds cool to me. She's a, Katie, what you're saying has the exact opposite effect. It's actually cool now. Rat girls drink milk. I can't so then, wait. Uh, okay, so Lisa goes, You're not I'm not going to your fucking <laughs> restaurant. Bring those sandwiches on a platter to me and Ken. You're having a scene at Sir. What the fuck are you thinking? Yeah, I'm she's not, like, bring that caprese to my mouth. It's open air sandwiches. Katie is actually bringing from something about her to sir um they I all liked how chef penny was like is lisa coming they were like no no she's gonna be at sir she's gonna eat him <laughs> over there two miles away yeah um uh I, lisa i mean lisa is doing very good I, I cannot believe how often they were at sir this season it's yeah. still shocking to me yeah another groundbreaking scene at sir yeah um lala makes the painstaking decision to tell Ariana that she was with Sandoval earlier. And I just like, you're watching Ariana being like, how is she going to respond to this? Like, what is she supposed to say? Yes. She's like, I had the most productive conversation in history with Tom Sandoval. And Ariana's like, that's cool. Cause while you were doing that, I was the fucking 911 ER vet spending six grand for my dog to get her stomach pumped or pulling a wooden skewer out of Maya's ass. <laughs> while you're talking about this beautiful conversation you had. And also this is the third time or second time someone said, I had a deep, meaningful conversation with Sandoval. Yeah. It's like, I think that I, I, the problem for me now is like why people are like, Ariana is like not being fun or whatever. It's because she has said definitively what she doesn't want to do. And everybody keeps coming up to her going, do you go in? Guess what? I actually ended up having a great conversation with him. It's like, I don't care. Yeah. Stop talking to me about this. Yeah. Like, I, I, her only scenes are and are against Tom Sandoval. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, that's a, not a fun position to be in. Yeah um yeah so then uh this is the sandwich minute yeah um, um schwartz goes, brings over espresso martinis he spills the shit out of it did you <laughs> yeah. see that that was the most spillage i've seen lisa's like that's why you were never a waiter yeah um and then they try and bring up the sheena make out uh because katie reveals it to ken and lisa he yeah. has a little i can't believe moment yeah um, and then he, they try and bring it up to Schwartz and he's like, can we not? I really, I don't want to talk about this. Like I got to get out of here. And he's like, abort, abort. And they're all like, wow, like got to run when things get rough. And he yeah. just like runs away. He <laughs> ran away. Um, and he goes to where Brock is at that special little area of Sir yeah. that we know all too well. Yeah. And, uh, he was sweaty as hell. Yeah. He was like, I just had a wild conversation over there. Goes, Brock goes, why the hell are you so sweaty? He goes, I just had to talk about sheena and joe and they made fun of me and brock goes well guess what buddy i don't think katie should have one minute of making fun of you about that said she should get off her high horse get off your goddamn high horse katie because guess what happened sheena has the locations of 56 people in her phone and we all went to an after party after hotel ziggy and we saw max and katie sort of too close for comfort yeah and my wife checked his location afterwards, <laughs> and we found out that he was at Katie's apartment right. complex. By the way, they kept saying they went to Melrose Place. I know. What do they mean? What I think is it's that? a restaurant okay. called Melrose Place. I, okay. I think I looked it up because I was like, what the hell are you guys talking yeah. about? They all went to an after party at Melrose Place. Is it on Melrose Place? I think so, but I didn't okay. look too hard into it. I didn't want to. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, so I was like, all right, Brock, immediate MVP. Um and uh and, well and and he says i mean we didn't say it but we already said it a million times he goes it was your boy bro yeah it was your boy no goes, were you like chomping at the bit to find out who it I was go, i was what? like who could it be i go I, first of all i was like how did they not tease this right i was like this is just, i love that we like, got we to got, surprise we were shocked and then yeah. it's like your boy i was like what boy and then he he shorts knows he's like <laughs> max 
And then I've never seen I've got uh, people, I think, say, I don't know, whatever. I don't care. I'm saying my true thoughts. Schwartz was phased by this yeah. and disheartened mm -hmm. and bummed out. And I, I, I felt like it really hit him. And Brock said he didn't have a good reaction to it, but I think he did. He was mm -hmm. like, Max? Yeah. Max? He said and, it has all the telltale signs of a revenge bang. Right. Which I don't know. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm putting that, that characteristic on it. I don't, yeah. I don't know if I'm willing to go there. I don't, what do you like? I guess we should talk about it now. What, what do you like? I don't know if like she thought about it that much. It sounds like they were like fucked up and they went home together. Like, I don't think she was like, maybe she had a moment where she was like, this is kind of messy, but also who cares because Schwartz didn't honor that code. Yeah. But also she didn't um like she didn't want it to come out. Right. And she it was actively be tried to suppress it. And she won't talk about the ethics of it at all she like i think i think this was just yeah a horny decision she made yeah like i don't think it was to spite schwartz right and i don't know if that would have been a good thing if everybody found out that it was in pure revenge right um so then when sandoval arrives they tell him this goss um which yeah. You can tell he really wants to pop off about it, but I feel like he yeah. knows that he can't. It's like a gift from heaven for yeah. Sandoval. Yeah. He is like, the double standard is so rich. He's like, but I won't talk about it further. <laughs> yeah. And then for some reason, Ariana needs to get water from that exact area. No, because T is there. They just yeah. had their shitty date at bowling. Yeah. Ariana wants water. And they introduce themselves. Then uh, it's revealed that she's there with Sandoval. Um, Ariana goes, how old are you? She's like, I'm 25. And she's like, don't waste your time with a 41 year old narcissist. Just so you know, like he was fucking someone else in my house when I was at my grandma's funeral. And she's like, oh no. She goes, <laughs> you're so strong. Yeah. <laughs> and then Ariana's like, you're a prize. He's not a prize. I yeah. was like, oh, I would just, I mean, maybe I would do something like that. I just, I feel like I'd be like, can I get out of here? Yeah. I felt, well, I don't know. I don't, I wish Ariana wouldn't have wasted this talk on T. Yeah. Because T. Uh, it's I, not I, long for this show. T, you're awesome. Uh, <laughs> we, we are one of the coolest people, but uh, you're not, you know, we know that you're not going to be in a relationship for a very long time with Sandoval. I wish Ariana could have had this powerful moment with someone else, not just this one time wonder date that Billy Lee set up fully fabricated. It was like kind of wasted on the wrong person. Right. But I, I, I liked the impulse. Right. You, you, she should know what this person did. And Ariana is actively hating him again in this mm -hmm. moment because of what he did to Maya. Right. Um, then Sheena realizes that Brock has told everyone uh, she's furious. She seems like really fucking pissed. And I he so then too. gets pissed back because he's like, what the hell? Like he was going to find out eventually, whatever. He goes, I'll leave right now, Sheena. You're, you're <laughs> annoying me right now. Which I double respect that he was willing to put his relationship at risk to for the quality of the show. And let's just talk about it. I know we're not like, we don't have to bring into what I've heard all the time to counter them. But people are like, why did Brock bring this up? And it's like, because <laughs> Tom Schwartz should know if one of his very good friends slash they say best friend made love to his ex, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, even if they're not in a relationship, you kind of, something you want to know, yeah, right? And then uh, they when they go back to the table, uh, Sheena's like cl clearly pissed and upset. And they're all like, what's wrong, Sheena? Like, what's going on? She and is she's huffing and puffing. She's like, ask Brock. And Brock goes, he's eating like <laughs> chicken skewers or whatever. And he goes, he goes, what, what, how does he, he just says something like, basically in <laughs> says, so many words, like we're talking about your little rendezvous last night. And Katie <laughs> is flabbergasted. And she's like, what? What are you talking about? And like she's trying to like survey how much information there is totally. so that she doesn't reveal too much. It's like when um, you're interrogating someone uh, and you're like, your partner blabbed. He told me everything. You know, shit. Well, if he told you that, you got to know the real truth is this. Totally. She goes, she, she is, um, I've never, I really have never seen Katie like this. I promise. I yeah. think this is the first time I've seen her not having the full scoop and not knowing what to do and reacting in real time. And I also felt like Katie was either very drunk or very high because mm -hmm. she is not <laughs> at her top form when she's reacting to this. Mm -hmm. Did you get that sense? I felt like she just like clammed up completely. Okay. Like also, also she was like, fuck. And then Brock was kind of like chiding her. He was like, 
wasn't a, a Netflix and chill, was it? He's he's <laughs> giving it back because Katie goes so, like so what? So yeah, what? Like, you why does he out? need to know about no, it? No, 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 no. She says she says something like, um, she's like, um, so Max came back to my house. What of it? We watched yeah. him, you know, whatever. And he's like, oh yeah, so mm-hmm. just a kind of a Netflix and chill night or whatever. Also, I want to say I think that the person that's next to Katie is like on a date with her. Oh yeah, who is that guy? <laughs> I think it's a date. Okay, yeah, I was like, who is that man? She's like talking to him and like confiding in him in the moment i think they didn't introduce him but it's like that's right. funny that he went on a date potentially with katie and he, has, and he hears that she had right. sex with a uh, max boy right. the night before right and uh you know she's kind of like um like why does he need to know or whatever and brock's like because that's fucked up like it's like in the friend group or whatever and she validly says like he didn't give a shit when i made that request which i agree like i'm like the, we spent entire last season uh schwartz uh making that agreement null yeah. and void so if it's already been broken, it's over. Like you think, it's what she's gonna do something out of respect for him when she had to be like a party to like the worst scandal in history because he wanted to make out with Rachel on camera for some reason. Do onto others as they do to you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I agree that I don't think Katie has to at all think about the ethics of fucking max boyens because of his relationship with schwartz yeah i find much more fault on max boyens Mm -hmm. and i always thought max i always got a bad feeling about max boyens i think that is despicable and i say that a lot now abhorrent (laughs) for him to do that to a very good friend no matter how drunk he was yeah katie says that he was flirting with her just as much he initiated it i think that's sickening and then what's like i didn't even think about it till right this second didn't he have history with dana who's her podcast co-host i yeah and and people will say that i don't think dana and max's relationship was very real It, it felt very forced for the show um everything about season eight is so bad and i don't believe anything that happened on that but yeah i'm sure katie had to preempt this conversation or or, sorry prepare dana for this fact before it came out because they did have a little thing right but i don't put this i don't put this moral quandary on katie yeah i put it on max but i still think it is evidence that needs to be told so that everybody gets to choose how they feel about it. Yeah. And if Lala chooses to feel that she thinks it's very odd that Katie fucked Schwartz's best friend and yeah. she uses that as in a, a metric for how she judges her friendship with Katie, that is fine. Yeah. People have different standards for what they want of friends. Right. And she's, she's shocked by Katie's behavior. Yeah, she she's so offended that she leaves. She's like, I don't know any of y'all, I guess. Like, I'm she said she's annoyed uh, and yes. she leaves. And I think she lumps in Ariana with this I don't truly know anyone. I think she truly doesn't know Sheena. She found out a long harbored secret about Sheena that Sheena lied about. She finds out this kind of fact that upsets her about Max Boyens. I'll be honest, Ariana is just as shocked by this revelation. She goes, Max Boyens? I know you can see her in the corner going, what is going on? She goes, so it's not just Lala who's taking, um, who's who's thinking about this. And, and, and that's why I love this because it's fracturing it, the allyship. Yeah, it caught him off guard. And Ariana <laughs> was, say what, what Ariana, whatever she'll say in the moment after to say I fully ride or die with Katie, but you were stunned that this revelation happened. She was yeah. stunned. You, you, they caught her moment on it. Yeah, yeah Lala, um, rightfully says i don't think i know any of these people but she shouldn't have said i think ariana's lying about why she's in the house i don't know what the hell she is thinking about this house why does she care right why can you imagine a world where two people live in the house together after a separation (laughs) why can't she believe that i don't know why she she should not have lumped ariana in but i'm fine with how lala felt about katie and sheena and it's honestly how i felt at the end of the episode i was like do i really know any of these Little stinkers on Vanderpump Rules. Right. I thought I knew them. Yeah. Uh, I loved then um, in the after show, Katie was trying to paint that Sheena's a creep for having um, yeah. that many locations shared or whatever. And I'm like, I'm not someone like that, but I think a lot of people are. Yeah. And Ariana is one of them yeah, because I- she goes, 
I have a lot of people's locations. She said, she's like, it's fun. Sometimes you open it and you're like, look where everybody is. Like, I think it's kind of like a thing. Yes. Yeah. No. So I love that Ariana was honest and was counter to Katie's creep theory. Rat. <laughs> Little snake that looks at people's location and watches them slither around LA. It's like, no, a lot of people do this. People find joy. Some people like to have their location with their friends. It's not nefarious or weird. Yeah. And that's Katie. That's why I'm like, Katie, you think this was odd of you because you're doing anything to deflect and blaming Sheena for just a revelation that everyone yeah. learned. I mean, she did use her uh, access for, uh, you know, that's, she used it against that's her. Yeah, if, yeah, but that's, but, but it's, but it's fine for Sheena. Sheena doesn't even, in my opinion, she, she does not even need to justify why she did that. If you're curious about where your friend is and you find that they slept overnight in, <laughs> in uh, San Francisco and you didn't know they were going on a trip and you're curious yeah. and they give you your location. I'm yeah. sorry, Katie, that you got blown by that. <laughs> like you're, you're cover yeah. blown by that. Yeah, because but... she, she tried to bring in consent that she didn't consent to her location being uh, shared or whatever. Okay, well. And, um, and uh, <laughs> Sandoval brings up that at during peak Scandaval, yeah. a lot of people wouldn't hang out with him because he was like, Sheena has my location, so I can't be seen at your house. <laughs> Sandoval, and, and another an anecdote that you shouldn't share. Right. <laughs> and he goes, only one person has my location. And they're like, who? And he goes, I won't tell. So I don't know what his, he was implying, just his, his current girlfriend <laughs> gives a shit. Um, and uh, people are starting to talk online about like, why didn't Sheena check where rachel and tom were or whatever. whatever and apparently i think at some point rachel has in her many accounts said that i think she yeah. had to no. unshare from sheena no, at she, one point she said um she put uh her phone on a wheel well of <laughs> and let her car be ubered so that <laughs> sheena would have no fucking clue where she was right her car was just ubering around los angeles <laughs> with a tracker on it just going in circles um but yeah i'm trying to think is there anything no. <laughs> else from uh the after show no, we, or anything we, um, like that max max um whatever schwartz like max you did this to the best person in the world you did this to the five percent of people that would forgive you forever <laughs> and Schwartz said yeah he called me he said damn i was drunk dude can't believe uh He's i like, did it it but... was 4 a.m there was a disco ball and schwartz is like that was our disco ball but dude you know me <laughs> man i like to have sex with your ex-wife and schwartz <laughs> goes okay you can be my friend again Ugh. which is like a huge what, why uh, wasn't that a scene why what why isn't why isn't everything a scene when you knew that Ma I, maybe they couldn't have a scene with a person they're not paying and right. they didn't want to give max his yeah. salary for a second season but next yeah. week will be good though it's the beach scene yeah. and, and ariana finally gets what i realized when i saw the clip of ariana getting pissed and saying like what do you expect when i'm like hanging yes. out with this person or whatever i'm like that's i want to see the fire because she's kind of just always a little bit shut down which is not particularly fun to watch and i understand that she's trying to like stay out of it and like mind her business and just like survive this yeah. weird experience but i'm like i think a lot more people would be like and I know most people are on her side and I'm on her side, but it would be easier to relate to if she had some more energy. To totally, totally. And and the only counter to that, which is I have is obviously I want to see Ariana scream at Tom Sandoval yeah. and yell at him and call into question all of his actions. I don't but give a shit about fucking Raquel. Yeah. Like I want I, for a viewer, <laughs> we want to see that, but her no contact policy of this, like in her mind, evil person she would never have talked to him if it wasn't for the show. And so like she has to really um, go against her standards to, to sure. for the benefit of the show. And I think she finally will do that. But I understand why she didn't want to disregard her hard rule for herself up until this point. Yeah. Um, and then we also get Schwartz confronting Katie about Max next week, which is exciting um, because it's like, what's she going to say? Yeah, I'm. I'm excited to see. I mean, she'll say uh, Sheena shouldn't have had my location, or I don't know. No, it sounds like. I mean, she, she covers her eyes, but I don't yeah. know what that really means. Like, um, do you think that she'll be like? Um, I, I don't think she needs to apologize or anything like that. But I'm curious about like how the conversation will go. Like, will she be? Will she just be like, yeah, I fucking did it. Like, it's none of your fucking business. Like, is she gonna be like, fuck you, I don't care, or is she gonna be like, I know, it's kind of weird. I would have thought, yeah, like, see, that's why, like, I would have thought, like Lala, 
like Lala said, I thought I, lo- I like she loves L- L- Katie saying I light them on fire and I will run a train, but she didn't think she would actually do that to Schwartz. So like I kind of would be surprised if Katie was like, "Yeah, I fucked your best friend, and it was pure <laughs> revenge for the evil that you bestowed upon me, and I got you yeah. back." And people are like, "Yes, <laughs> like I love this Katie," but it's like I, don't, I I liked Katie because I thought she was a good person, right? And that's I mean I guess you can still be a good person and. Fuck your <laughs> friend's ex for revenge. I have a feeling them. she's gonna be like, I don't want to talk about this. Yeah, or it's um, not your business. It's none of your business. Yeah. Like, I, why do you care what I do? Here's the perfect defense. I I was horny and drunk. <laughs> Max was flirting with me. I always found him attractive, even when I was in a relationship with you. And now that I'm not in a relationship with you, I wanted to fuck him, and he tried really hard to f- <laughs> fuck me, <laughs> and we did it. And I didn't think about his friendship with you. I, that would be. <laughs> That would be, I think, that's the Katie that I want to hear. Yeah. I guess I also didn't really have context. I didn't know. It didn't hit as hard because I don't know that he's so close with him. Which, but everyone said they're best they, friends. They said it over and over. I'm not, I, I, I'm, I trust them. What if she was like, Tom, revenge is a dish <laughs> best served hot. And she said, I'm going to light you on fire. (laughs) And that's why I fucked him. Oh, yeah. That was part of the rat girl tweet. It was like, this rat bitch is a crackhead. I will light her on fire alongside Rachel. I love. like, she needs to start like consulting a lawyer before making threats of violence. Yeah. But I do like that we still get unhinged, unfiltered commentary from Katie. Yeah. Light them on fire. (laughs) Which is in uh, Rachel's like deposition or whatever against uh, Tom. We have, oh, yeah, yeah. Katie Maloney, who <laughs> repeatedly uh, threatened to light me on fire in quotations. It's like threatened wounds of a and, burn nature. And Rachel goes, there are people like, you know, people that would come up to me and light me on fire, <laughs> you know, because of what Katie said, which you I know. think we have merch about that. Maybe we should take it off the shelves. <laughs> or if you want a <sighs> candle that has Katie on it that says uh, light you on fire or something um that look one, at our etsy that one was good because it's <laughs> it's metaphorically you light it when you want to light your enemies on fire metaphorically it mm-hmm. does not mean we want we're you to assuaging do- violence we're giving the- violent uh pyromaniacs the opportunity to light the flame were, in a safe way were you thinking about lighting something <laughs> else on fire why not light a candle on fire and <laughs> pretend in your mind's eye that you lit that thing on fire check that box check that box for yourself anyway yeah there are candles in our merch shop do we have to (laughs) do we have we have to talk about the valley we can do a little quick run through okay um let's talk if we're not going to do a deep dive actually you know what could i could i actually pull our uh not uh, it's not called prima noctra but can i do a (laughs) pull a certified turtle piss break yes piss let's do it all right thanks there was breaking turtle time news while I took a huge certified turtle piss. What? Ariana Maddox is going to host Love Island USA instead of the current person oh. that hosts it. Who is it now? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Wow, another gig. Good for her. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she got to pay for that house. Do you watch that? No. Me neither. Okay. <laughs> um, All right. We're going to do a speedy... The valley run through. Let's peek behind. Let's do a peek behind the curtain. I think it'll help. <laughs> we have a hard out. We have a hard out. Amy and I never have hard outs. We <laughs> love going until the break of dawn, but we have a hard out of 20 minutes. So we're going to try to do the fastest, quickest recaps of both Summer House and the valley. So it's, this is going to be whittled down, but it's still going to be the most, the hottest takes you've ever heard in your life. Yes. Um, okay. So it was exciting to me that this episode started at Smokehouse, an iconic Burbank establishment. Now, I don't want to talk about it too much, but I've never been. You've promised to take <laughs> me multiple times. It looked awesome. Yeah. I want a f- martini there. Yeah. It was so cool. Or maybe a, a lemonade, a, like an Arnold Palmer with Tito's like Kristen got. Uh, well, would you permit me to have <laughs> both? Yeah, one of each. Would you care if I was drunk? I would judge you just a little bit. Well, so I loved this scene because it was at an iconic establishment that I want to go to that I know you've been to, but I got to see it as a viewer. Yeah. This place looks fucking awesome. (laughs) I like that Kristen was like, he's known me for 16 years and he took me to a steakhouse, which called to mind when her boyfriend Tom Sandoval brought her to Korean barbecue. Yeah. Not a good place to eat. (laughs) 
as a vegetarian. No. I mean, I at least eat seafood, so I can always get like shrimp or salmon or something. But yeah, she just got the house salad, which is a bummer. I know. I felt bad for her. Um, but what I didn't feel bad for was seeing Jax and Kristen sit down together <laughs> and have a meal and talk about their lives and how they are. And I just like, I just love that we're getting new scenes of them. And I just wish this scene could have just happened on Vanderpump Rules and we would have been so <laughs> stoked. Like yeah. All of this shit that's going on with Jax and Kristen and Luke and Brittany just could have been on Vanderpump Rules and just been a part of what we're all dealing with there. Right. But I guess I'm just, I am glad that we get this glimpse no matter how it comes. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jax was like, back in the day, I would have loved to work at a place like this. This is where uh, producers and directors and actors come. It's like the real... Uh, hub of LA he's like uh valley pilled now yeah even though he reveals I think he said he hadn't been there no he wanted to go to smokehouse really bad on his own yeah um and he ordered a, a cheeseburger with cheese and ketchup only yeah and uh, Kristen goes like a little baby <laughs> um and then he apologizes for publicly ambushing ambushing her about trying to get pregnant and he used one of his favorite like classic non sequitur lines like uh i don't care if you have 20 kids i don't care if you have five kids <laughs> yeah right yeah he didn't care either way <laughs> um, but he apologizes uh, uh Kristen says i why are you why do you care basically like what does this mean to you i would hope that you would just trust me on this and also she tries to get Jax to um warm up to luke a little bit yeah she's like you don't know luke's last name yeah you don't know where he's from and Jax goes you know what yeah you're right i will try to get to know luke's last name it's like <laughs> you don't know his last name he's a cast member on your show with i you. know yeah and Kristen's like Jax is lucky he stumbled upon a saint who's willing to put up with his bullshit which we've discovered recently Brittany is no longer willing to do no. um and she spills the tea that jesse uh gave her a purple nurple <laughs> Which planted a seed for some drama towards the end of the episode. Yeah, total. You're right. I forgot. Yeah, total purple nurple. She tells uh, <laughs> Jax. Um, yeah, and that's 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 it. Yeah, <laughs> that's it for that scene. And just so just so everyone knows, we're kind of gonna stay Jax and Kristen and Luke focused, right. and not really dwell too much in the Danny and Nia. Although we will get to them, you know, in future episodes. Right. Um, they show Kristen and Luke on a hike where they humor us in a moment where she tells us that Luke wears the pants in the relationship, which I refuse to believe. You don't think? No. I will say, though, by the end of this episode, um, he, you know, has a little bit more gravitas than yeah. we've seen so far when he confronts Jesse about the purple nurple. And I'll say, <laughs> tur I'll t I'll g I got to give Luke credit. Never been on a reality show before. And he stood his ground and stood firm to his thoughts and didn't make an ass of himself in any of his scenes. And he's kind of being uh, bombarded with a lot yeah. in a reality television environment. And he stuck up for his, himself and came across good. He So at the park, at the park bench, the, the, there's like a quote on the park bench. It says, all things are good through love or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Kristen tells him, she goes, hey, Jesse nurpled me. <laughs> and he goes, my blood is absolutely <laughs> boiling right now. In no way is it ever good for Jesse to nurple my girlfriend and I'm going to have words with him. I'm sitting here and my blood is boiling. Yeah. And Kristen goes, it's so fucking hot when your blood boils <laughs> like that. Yeah. And then later, all the boys are playing hockey, um, which they all point out, or at least Jesse does, that it turns out Jax is bad at hockey. Sad. I didn't. <laughs> You know, I like things being demystified, but I didn't like to know that Jax's <laughs> sacred hockey sport that he talks about all the time, <laughs> he sucks at it. Yeah. And Jesse was like running or blading circles around yeah. him. Yeah. Well, he was like, I haven't played in years. Uh, whichever is the one that has a baby on the way that I forget his name. He's like, all fun hobbies out the window. Good luck. Yeah. He goes, I am. I, I am old as hell now. They play for like four minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then he's like, Jesse, did you do a, a nipple twister on Kristen? Jesse, Jesse goes, I've nurpled before, but that has, I don't think I did it this time. He says <laughs> he doesn't want to fully own up to it. Even though, was he that drunk already at the party? I feel like he has to remember that. I think he was oh, actually. Oh. I think he like low key might be like yeah. a real boozer. Um, and then he's like, they're like, you grabbed her boob. And then they're like, he doesn't remember. And then they're like, um the uh 
producer's like, Jesse, are you intimidated by uh, Luke? And he goes, that's like asking a panther if he's scared of a kitten. Yeah, and in that instance, <laughs> Luke's the kitty, right? Little Did kitty cat. Kitten. Yeah. Um, and then it's revealed that Jax, who's the shitster of the century, I guess he, he has stock in the show. He wants to make it work. Yes. Invited Kristen's ex, Alex, to this boys' night yeah. where Luke will be. Right. And I want to say um, it, there's no rationale real rationale for why Jax does this. He says, I want to have a guy's night and I want all the guys to get along. So obviously I'm going to invite Kristen's ex-boyfriend, but it's just clearly he's obeying some plot line in his head and doesn't know how to rationalize it. He gives like six different excuses throughout this episode to justify why he is bringing Kristen's ex-boyfriend. And even Kristen is like, they don't hang out that often. Like, right. There's no reason why he does this. And Luke's, yeah. again, pissed. Right. And like uh, they tell Kristen there's a girls' night happening at the same time. And they're like, just so you know, uh, Alex is going. I think Brittany tells her. She's like, Alex is going tonight. And uh, she's like, are you fucking kidding me? She's like outraged. Yeah. She's like, what the hell? And Brittany is like apologizing on Jax's behalf and like defending him that like it was actually really nice of him to include Luke when like she, he's trying to include everyone yeah um and, and then uh she's like actually you know alex belongs there more at two bit circus with them and then Kristen, you know that pisses Kristen off completely right so Brittany and Kristen have a little bit of a rift over jack's behavior what's the true uh thing to take into account here is that it is awful of jack <laughs> and it's he even he like knows that's stupid right and doesn't make any sense and jesse i liked when jesse jesse's like a a mean in a different way than Jax. It's really weird. Mm-hmm. Jesse's like mean to his core. Mm-hmm. It almost makes <laughs> Jax look like a doofus, his mean energy or his dumb energy. Jesse's like, you are a child. You're thinking like a little child for even bringing up that you should bring Alex to two bit circus with right. us. Which is what I was like, damn, yeah. a child. Thinking right. like a child. And Jax wasn't that pissed off at him for saying that. Right. Um, yeah. And this is where we saw that Max was there with them. Um, and then Alex enters and he gets a little moment to disparage Kristen. Uh, Jack's kind of like interviews him a little bit and is like, so am I understanding this correctly? Um, you uh, like, because she had previously said that she sold her house at his advice. He's an agent um, that she moved in with him. And then, um, then they broke up. But he says here that he gave her a lot of money, lent her a lot of money. And then when she did list her house, that he did it for free and that she lived with him for uh, months for free. Um, In their relationship? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, both sides can be still true because Kristen didn't say anything that doesn't, that counters what he said. Right. right. He I mean, I did, to- I did um, assume that she was having money trouble if she was willing to sell her house me too and she doesn't she doesn't say that but we talked about that last week obviously he couldn't make her you know deny all logic of owning a home like i think she was not doing good she had just been fired it's okay for her if she wants to admit that she was not doing well financially this in this era it's just a horrible decision i feel so bad for her that Kristen got that like beautiful house finally at the apex of her (sighs) career and then had to give it away and have this like shitty yeah. relationship as well right um and then they imply that shit's about to go off there's like a five minutes later and that guy zach is there at the girls night and he's popping off about uh, alex being there right can i be a down and dirty little stinker about yeah. Zach's? zach yeah yeah um he's he, every line he says sounds like a producer is reading <laughs> a script for him in his yeah. brain and all of the teaser quotes that you hear from him like <laughs> She might as well be considered the Queen of England because she's dead to me. Uh, if loose lips sink ships, ships, then she might as well be on the Titanic. Is <laughs> She sings whole armadas. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's like, what? And then, and then when you see the teaser of five minutes later when he's like, I did not say that. It's like, it's so over the top and yeah. performative. I'm like, you are singing for your supper on this show and yeah. it is not the right energy and <laughs> they made the right decision. You're a friend of, yeah. I'm glad. What yeah. I really have high hopes for, I actually, oh, sorry. So we're going to, we're going to, well, we're, we're doing okay, right? Time-wise. Um, final uh, thoughts. <laughs> final thoughts. Let's, let's wrap it up. Um, I think I find a lot of merit to the other cast members more than I thought. Not really Jasmine and Zach. They're clearly friend ofs. But there's enough stuff going on with definitely Michelle and Jesse. Mm-hmm. Jesse's energy is 
not one I've seen in a while. Yeah. It's like Josh Takeman, sort <laughs> of, like even weirder, like even yeah. meaner than Josh. Like I yeah. haven't seen a person so willing to look like an asshole on camera yeah. in a while that doesn't think they're the hero. He doesn't even, mm-hmm. I don't think he thinks he looks good in any of these scenes. It's right. like a, it's a different energy that I've ever seen. So I'm right. interested in that. Danny seems like a nice guy and... I don't, maybe they're on the chopping block. I don't, I don't know if there's a lot there. He's fine. Mm-hmm. And then who's the other couple? <laughs> I told you, I always forget. Danny and Nia, and then... Um, is there a Justin? Oh, oh Jason and Janet. Oh, I think Jason. Janet. I think Janet is <laughs> I knew funny. It was a J. I think Janet is funny and normal, and I think Jason has some good energy too. So I'm not I'm not like fully out on the valley. I think it's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, like I said, I wish it was on Sundays. I don't think it's appointment you, viewing. Okay. Yeah. Well, good. Well, I mean, we can always... Um, you know, you and I could always switch up when we do talk <laughs> the about the valley, valley challenge. I mean, we could. I mean, the world is our oyster for what we want to do. But that was good. Okay, so did we? We got the crux of the valley, right? I think so. Yeah. You I think, think it was okay, right? Good. Yeah, I was entertained, but uh, I'm hoping that like major shit goes down that makes it even better. Um, but I think there are a couple of points. We have to honor people that did the summer house challenge and just talk high level about last week's episode, which was, you know, kind of a low key one. Yeah. So we've been, you know, Amy and I do uh, breaking news updates when summer house was like the wildest shit in the world we've ever seen. But for that one, it seemed a little more low key, like it didn't require instant you know, takes on it. So we're kind of putting it on the back burner, but we're going to leave it up to Amy and I's discretion what warrants an emergency summer house <laughs> episode because we have to tell you. It's extremely hard for Amy and I to do more, <laughs> yeah, more than what we're currently doing. Right? Yes. That's just honest. Yeah. Right? So, so this this summer house didn't rise to the challenge of like stop everything. Let's no. This is the summer house five. The summer house five. Yeah. So, um, wh- what did you do? You have like like obviously it was great to see Craig and Paige back in the house, and I'm excited personally to see how Craig reacts and his take on. Carl and Lindsay because it's kind of a fresh set of eyes yeah who knows them really well and I don't think he even has any clue to the extent to which they're having difficulties so I'm excited for that that's like kind of like a tee up for the Craig era and this yeah. whole thing um no I liked that I feel like Craig has a healthy point of view um and uh I'm trying to think, like what? So um, it was there the was the tent a, episode. Yeah, so what, this uh, was a this was more on just the fun, fun, fun scale. Carl even says this is the best like weekend we've had. Like Carl and I, and Lindsay are like doing good. That was a fun night, and he even acknowledges that he, next weekend he doesn't want to come on the Friday to a. He wants to avoid the Friday night fight so that him and Lindsay won't have the blowout, and then they can potentially have a good weekend. So he's almost he's like rearranging his weekend schedule so that him and Lindsay. <laughs> might not have a fight right in the future um but a lot of so jesse and sierra kind of i get i think give carl sort of a hard talk of their view of things and jesse yeah. asks carl he says you know did you ever get the apology from Lindsay about accusing you of drugs and carl says um if i got that apology i don't remember <laughs> and then jesse's like well you know that is really sad to hear and then sierra kind of probes even deeper and she's like If shit is like this now, I mean, this is like, I'm whittling it down, but if shit is like this now, this is not something that you want going into a family. Like all of this stuff now. She's like, my dad was like an angry alcoholic and my mom eventually left him for it and it sucked. It like ruined my childhood. So you probably don't want to enter having a kid with someone who is a bad drunk. That's what she was saying. (laughs) And uh, yeah, a little bit of um, a, a, yeah, tough talk you know with carl but honest yeah and valuable feedback for him to hear because not everybody's going to tell him that and i am sure it means a lot like sierra like sierra doesn't have to say that to you it's like it means something to her to tell you the truth about this and even jesse as a new person with a fresh opinion is just like what the fuck is going on this is how it is you know what i mean (laughs) it's like they're both valued it's like sierra has uh, experience with you all and has this opinion and Jesse is new and has this opinion. It's like, that's valuable to see both ranges of it. Yeah. Um, there was a moment with Kyle and Craig where Craig asks a personal question to Kyle where he's like, what's it like working with Amanda? Oh yeah. And, and Kyle was kind of like, um, you know, we have different energies with how we work and, uh, she decompresses differently. Anyway, I want to ask you about uh, a <laughs> long distance with Paige. And I was like, God <laughs> damn, like, 
Can Paige and Craig stop talking about their relationship for one episode? Yeah. It is like getting so ridiculous. Yeah. And then Craig kind of counters Kyle and he's and because Kyle's like questioning how, why he's not drinking liquor anymore mm-hmm. as if that's like a huge evolution. Yeah. And uh, Craig says, you know, I'm working on being the best me right now. And regardless of what happens with Paige, if it works out, it does. If it doesn't, I'll still be okay. And Kyle kind of has this like, non galaxy brain reaction to that where he's like what do you mean if it doesn't work out you'll still be good it's like it's like kyle what the hell are you talking he goes he's like there's a there's a world where you see that you guys might not work out and craig's like yes uh, of course there is that's yeah. true of any relationship i'm just like i enough of, that it's like a producer brain kyle trying to get to the root of something it was like everything that craig is saying makes sense and it's just in my opinion, it is time for all of them to move on. Craig and Paige are happy with yeah. what is going on now. Yeah. And they ask, they do other stupid questions like, Paige, if you move into a new house or an apartment, will Craig pay more? And she's like, I don't want him to. What if we right. broke up and he's paying $1,000 that he's owed to me every month? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I mean, we, uh, we, I feel like we maybe talked about this on Patreon or something, but I was shooketh to, I don't know why I said shooketh. I don't like that. I, I. I have to stop myself from saying shooketh with you. It is the, my go-to when I don't want to say shaken to my core. I try not to say it. I uh, need it too. I'm so glad Paige, you just let it out. Uh, <laughs> pays a shit ton in rent. It was nine like wants to almost pay. Almost nine. She pays 8500 eight now. And I'm like, that's crazy because she lives alone. And then, so, and then Cray or, um, Carl and Lindsay pay 13000 And I'm like, New York is a joke. I mean, it's three times our rent in Los Angeles. Yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously it's dependent, but yeah. 9000 is like the For going For nine grand, rate. you could have like a, a mansion so in LA. So imagine Craig, his mind is getting blow, blown. Imagine. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you can get even South- double, triple yeah. in uh, Charleston. Like, but I, I'm stunned. We live in Los Angeles. Yeah. I'm stunned. Another one of the most expensive cities in the nation and, and that's still unbelievable. Even that is is um, shocking. So yeah, there's a little bit of Paige Craig. I'm fully over it. I love their relationship. I think it's very healthy. I think they clearly love each other. And I've already said this. If they break up, it seems like it'll be very healthy. And yeah. just because they can't make it work. And it will just be a, like a noble end to an experiment where they loved each other. It's like, no more talking about it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like, I don't care. They can make it work. They're rich enough. Yeah. Rich people can do anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> we'll have to watch what happens live. Okay. I want to ask you last take, last question before on the final five minutes. I think West and Sierra are doing pretty good by my chemistry read. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to fizzle. What, but, but wait, but they're, she's smacking him on the ass. She's rubbing his ears. I think they're she's kissing. having fun for the summer. But she obviously likes him. You can't. Okay, okay, you, you, so, so you're saying now, you said no chemistry, you said friend zone originally. I didn't say no chemistry, I said that she doesn't want to date him. You said Rod and Olivia repulsed. <laughs> That's not what I meant, I meant that like, she is keeping him at arm's length. Where's the arm? She was, <laughs> she, they're wrapped around each other these, in, this entire episode. They snuggle in the, the tent, yeah. they had a sleepover, in, not even on camera, a Monday night movie sleepover. Yeah. Like, I feel like she's taking it slow because she doesn't um, have sex with people early into a relationship. But I feel like she's like smitten with West. Yeah. I feel like it's. I, I, mm, I don't know. We'll see. Well, let's see once they we'll consummate. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we, yeah, we definitely will see. I just, I I just think to, that she like he's more down than she is, I guess is what I'm saying. I feel like he's playing it cool enough to where he's. I, well, OK. Everyone knows where I stand. <laughs> Little turtle cuties. Let us know. We, we didn't ask a poll on this, but like, I really think, I think West has fat, like Sierra has found the true beauty that we see in West <laughs> and like, likes him on the verge of. I just don't think they'll be dating come summer's end. I think they are. Okay. Can we, let's, let's do, um, let's, let's do the milk challenge where you and I <laughs> get our favorite sacred milk, but I drink whoever loses drinks more. Okay. Sounds good. Sweet. All right. We have to wrap. Okay. All right. So let's go. Okay. Uh, Little Turtle Cuties, we love you so much. And rate, review, subscribe. Please like us and follow us and go to Patreon. We love Love you. Love you. Bye.